Welcome to the Notorious Scoundrels, a Star Wars Legion podcast bringing you the latest news, general perspective, and competitive discussion. Hello and welcome back to the Notorious Scoundrels podcast. I'm Kyle. I'm here with Jay and Evan. That would be Evan Paul, not Evan Bolrus. Uh, yeah, by the please way. don't mix us up. I <laughs> yeah. really appreciate that. <laughs> You you are not a raccoon masquerading as a human boy. No, I'm a right now. I'm a doctor masquerading as a legion writer. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> yeah, Evan is Evan is a writer on our blog, the most recent addition to our blog team. Mm-hmm. Um, what what kind of doctor are you? Uh, I'm a hospitalist, so um, internal medicine, um, but I only do inpatient. Okay. Uh, and then I do a lot of uh, I do a lot of quality improvement work, and also lately some medical software work so i wear a lot of hats around here and i'm happy to have one more with you guys there well you go. that's what we like to bring you here at the fifth trooper is extremely qualified <laughs> humans doing ridiculous articles so <laughs> yeah, i always thought doc Velo was sort of just a tongue-in-cheek nickname but it turns out you're in fact an actual doctor <laughs> no, so. I'm, I'm fully yeah. qualified <laughs> <laughs> fully qualified to use that as a uh, pseudonym yeah um all right. Awesome. Well, uh, I am also back. It has been a, a couple of weeks. Did I miss two episodes or three? I, I honestly, d- my, my life has been such a whirlwind. I have no idea <laughs> okay. at this Mine point. Too. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I now have, I now have three kids instead of two. Um, but I am here. I'm talking about Legion. Uh, so yeah, happy, to, happy to be so. I was going to say um, I'm impressed that you're back so soon, but I, I guess it, it might be a little bit of a respite for you uh, at the end of the day. Uh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and um, there's a non-zero chance that you will hear a crying child in the background, but that's uh, fine. Yeah. Uh, no, I mean by the third kid. Um, uh, for starters, my wife's amazing. Let me just let me just open with that. Um, Does she listen to the podcast? Does she. Listen- <laughs> Uh, no, she doesn't. So that oh. was a completely um, wow. Uh, you meant it then. Brown nosing free. Uh, <laughs> it's a right there. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, no. Uh, yeah, by the third one, you you kind of like know what you're doing um, to the point where we've actually made some mistakes because we've kind of just like forgotten mundane things or just slacked off in ways that. Are- like I didn't even put the car seat in the car before we went to the hospital, uh, and I'm like, oh yeah, I guess we need like an infant car seat in this car. Yeah. How'd that um, turn out? Because you were like bragging about that beforehand, and in my head, I was going, <laughs> I don't know, that seems pretty important. Uh, it was, it was fine. <laughs> yeah. um, you know, you, um, it's funny because when you have your first kid, you do, you don't like as a dad, you don't really have, like, no, neither of you know what you're doing, um, mm-hmm. and sleep at the hospital is really hard to come by. So you kind of do need like both yes. parents there, yep. um, and as a dad, like, you don't really have much anything better to do. You know, you can't be like, honey, I'm gonna go home and you know play video games while you sit here at the hospital like <laughs> i gotta ra- i gotta rank up in the ladder honey I gotta yeah, go. <laughs> right. um, but you know once you have like multiple kids you know someone has to watch your other kids so you right. do go home um typically as a multi-kid dad so i'm like i'll just you know i'll just grab the car seat when i go home um but uh which i did end up going home but as it turned out uh, not as many times as i thought i would <laughs> so <laughs> I'm like, I'll be back home one more time before we're getting, you know, discharged. And then I'm like, wait a minute, uh, I need to go get this car seat. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so yes, well, we did successfully get the car seat. In well, the car that's good. The real hospital, magic but... is going to come is when your oldest can start watching the other ones. That's that's when things get real, real interesting. Yeah. We got a ways to go. She's five. Um, uh, she'll make so... it there someday. Yeah, I know. <laughs> and she's, yeah. Um. But yeah, no, it's good. It's um, you know, we're two weeks in here, so he's sleeping a couple couple hours at a time, which I think is good for yeah. For that's, that. That, that's so, pretty much the goal of two weeks, so it's yeah. good so far. So yeah, we're hit. We're hitting that milestone. Yeah, um, drinking lots of coffee. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, here I am. We're not talking about children. We're talking about Legion. Um, so uh, we're gonna hit a couple things today. We've got an uh, Jay has an interview with Keegan Evans. Um, from legion 99 later in in the cast um we've got some news some tournament news and specifically some adepticon news uh but first let's hit some housekeeping 
Okay, yeah. So for housekeeping, um, as you guys all just heard, Evan Paul here is one of our new writers. And if you like what Evan wrote, and if you like what any of our other writers write, uh, think about supporting us on Patreon. You know, that's how we we get these writers and and we we throw them some shekels here and there to, to get them to write ridiculous articles for us. Um, and, and that's how we do it is through the Patreon. And also, you know, you get a lot of other benefits from being a Patreon supporter. Like, uh, you know, we just got our mats in. And so I'm going to be sending out mats to all our supporters of, for one year um, at a certain level. So that's cool. They get a free map. Um, and there's other stuff. We do another podcast. Uh, we do live Q and A's. We do a lot of stuff on the Patreon as well. That's, you know, <clears throat> uh, in addition to what you get normally with the fifth trooper, uh, network. So that's good. Next thing is, um, storm tide. You know, we, we are going strong. We just shipped out box five and we're heading into box six. Um, one of the really exciting things, and I, I don't mind talking about it a little bit real quick, Kyle, I won't, I won't take up too much time, but is uh, for box seven in February, what we're doing is uh, I'm designing in a soft reset, which means that players who want to get in, but, you know, don't either don't have the money or the fortitude to, uh, you know, go back all six boxes, um, you could jump in at box seven. And so we're going to really be talking about that uh, in the month, this month of January to, to get new players in. And so um, I can also say that we, you know, in, in box one in the first kind of half of Stormtide so far, you know, you've been working on leveling up a commander and you have a commander that leads your army. Well, I can very confidently tell you that starting in box seven, you will be also be able to level up an operative. And so we're going to have operatives and commanders uh, for Stormtide. So that'll be pretty cool. And we'll talk more about today's not the day, but we'll talk more about that as we as we continue on this adventure. Um, and then the last uh, thing I kind of wanted to talk every to everyone about is um, if you guys haven't had a chance or if you forgot, uh, I've been using it a lot as I've been working on Stormtide, but is Legion Quick Guide. So, you know, we have the website legionquickguide.com and basically it's this really cool tool for, um, it's designed for mobile, but it can be used on, on your, your PC browser as well. And it's all the rules it, it basically alphabetized. So you just go, you know, if you need to learn about something under C, you just go to C, let's say you want to know, calculate the odds. You go down to C, you click it, click calculate the odds, and there's all the rules right out of the rule, you know, rules reference guide. So um, if you hadn't have a chance to see that yet, legionquickguide.com uh, for all your quick guide needs. Kyle, back to you. <laughs> awesome. Uh, well, we did get some reasonably significant news about Adepticon, mm -hmm. which is actually happening this year, supposedly. Mm -hmm. um, Mm -hmm. I'm totally not going to jinx it by saying that. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and uh, yeah, there are going to be Legion events there. There are, there are several listed on this sh schedule. Let me just, let me just go through and, and read them real quick. Um, on the 24th of March, there is a Star Wars Legion skirmish tournament. Uh, there is also two events for which there's only eight spots, but they appear to be narrative events. Ghost of Onyx is what they're calling it. Um, and there's one for the Galactic Civil War and one for um, uh, the, uh, you know, well, it's funny how they're labeled because one is labeled Galactic Civil War and then the other one is labeled Rebels versus Empire, which is kind of the same thing technically because the Galactic Civil War is <laughs> Rebels versus Empire. I assume they mean the Clone Wars and then Galactic Civil War. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. <laughs> but in any case, uh, there are two separate narrative events for the two different eras, it seems. Each only has eight spots, but those are narrative events. There's a skirmish tournament. Um, on the 25th, there is the Legion Adepticon Open, mm -hmm. which appears to be the main like competitive tournament at Adepticon for Legion. That's got 128 spots. Um, and they also have a player packet out for this now. It goes three days, um, Friday, Saturday, and then potentially Sunday. Uh, if you make top whatever, I don't know if they have details on exactly what, how many are they, they're going to cut, et cetera. Um, but it seems to be similar to, uh, 
you know, basically what they're doing for LVO this year, which is like a three day yeah. format where um, it's not a straight undefeated cut. I think after the first day, certain uh, X and ones, um, I think it's four rounds. Uh, so three and it's, ones. It's four I guess, rounds could... for each of the first two days. And so it's three, one for the first day. And then I think it's top eight after the second or top four after the second day. Okay. So it's like kind of a big cut uh, into the last day, which is only going to be top four. Okay. So yeah. Um, bottom line is it's a three day tournament. Um, assuming it fills up to 128. Yeah. So a big tournament. Uh, they have said this is explicitly not the world championships. That's correct. Um, which is relevant because I think you talked about this last week. Um, but, uh, they actually sent out a, like a little form via Twitter that basically said, if you have a world's invite, fill out this form. Um, and uh, yeah, um, I think I filled it out as correctly as possible. The event type <laughs> that I want to invite from was not on there. Yeah. Um, but uh, I'm sure they'll figure it out. Um, so yeah, if you have a world's invite, I'll mention that again. Go check that out and fill that out. Um, but this is not worlds. So uh, this is just a straight up open tournament that anyone can sign up for. Yeah. And I think we're. Uh... I not think I know we're going to talk more about Adepticon because we actually have a booth at Adepticon this year. So um, I will for sure be there uh, running the booth with Rachel and, and whoever else is coming for us. Um, and then we'll be back and forth between the, the tournaments as well, I'm sure. So, so fifth trooper will be there in force. Um, and so you can, you can come say hi at the booth, come chat and, you know, maybe buy stuff if you want. It's up to you. <laughs> and uh, tickets for that, I think, go on sale on the 11th. Uh, yes. So yep. we've got a little less than a week from when you hear this. So I, I'm guessing it's going to be mega popular. Uh, so it might be an LDO situation where you got like two hours to get in there um, yep. and then you're, you're out of it. Yeah. That seems somewhat likely. Um, and also just to, so you, you also need like a, a excuse me. Adepticon. I made it like 10 minutes into the cast without oh, missing something up. You're doing two weeks so off. good. <laughs> you're um, doing great, kid. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you need like an Adepticon general mm-hmm. admission pass also. Mm-hmm. Um, I would strongly recommend I say this knowing that I'm going to increase the pool of people that I'm in the lottery against, but uh, I would strongly recommend the VIG upgrade. Um, it's more expensive, but you get so much free stuff that it's like it kind of pays for itself. Yeah, it's like a ridiculous amount of free stuff. Yeah. Like, I still have stuff I haven't even opened yet yep. from the last one. Yeah, it's crazy. Yeah. Um, I think last time uh, I managed to to get that, and I I eBayed maybe like half of what was in there, and for like three hundred dollars. Yeah. Wow. Um, and then I kept the rest of it. So it was like, I mean, there's like full board games in there. There was like a Song of Ice and Fire starter yep. set yep. in one year um so yeah uh, i would 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 recommend strongly recommend the vig yeah. thing um it is i think a lottery um it's not like a first come first serve situation but yeah anyway check that out january 11th is the signups um and I'm, we'll definitely be talking about it more yeah in the future um brendan who's running the event brendan france has said that the prize support will be quote fire whatever that means um so I'm sure we'll find out more about that too in the future. But who knows? <laughs> yep. Either way, I'm what, excited. Yeah. Will this be like the first big general tabletop con that actually happened as a fully live event since the pandemic started? Uh by tabletop con, you mean something that doesn't just have tournaments at it? Right, right. Um, I mean Pax, LVO PAX, PAX and L PAX was pretty big. Yeah, and PAX. L- okay. Yeah. Yeah. The actual like Legion tournament at PAX was pretty small. Yeah. Um, yeah. But uh, yeah, PAX is an actual like board yeah, game slash true. minis game convention. Um, and LVO is mostly a tournament, but they do have like vendor booths and stuff there. So um, this is probably the biggest one mm. since the pandemic started. Yeah. You know, this Adepticon <laughs> and Gen Con are kind of like the two largest ones that are stateside. Right. Um, so. I mean, I think it's so big that they're in two hotels this year. They're in yep. two different areas, so it's going to yeah. be wild. It is. And I'm going to be um, 
well, hopefully I will be able to go. <laughs> I've got a, a soft, soft, maybe, um, strong, maybe. Uh, so we'll see how that works out. But if I, if I'm was there, it or... while she was tired, did she sleep the bride? <laughs> she got like, she's been up two days straight. You're like, yeah. hey, so uh, I, I was thinking about going to Adepticon in March. <laughs> Yeah, and I'm, I'm imagining her studies. eyes like completing closing, <laughs> yeah. and then Kyle goes. And by the way, you're cool if we go to Death Con, right? Okay, good night, honey. <laughs> Sounds she, good. Yeah, she yeah. falls asleep, and you're like, "That's yeah. a strong maybe." <laughs> yeah. Here, I just printed out this thing. You, you just like maybe throw your signature. Did you just sign it? Quick. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. We'll see. It's a strong maybe, uh, but I, if I'm there, I'll be getting Portillos, at least once, mm. mandatory. So, um, anyway, uh, speaking of tournaments, um, we're going to hit our interview with Keegan, uh, Jay's interview with Keegan, right? Meow. All right. So I am here with Keegan Evans. Keegan, what's going on? Hey, Jay. Great to see you again. Uh, yeah. it's, uh, yeah, well, we've made it through the holidays. Happy New Year. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. What's the last, I think the last time you and I saw each other in person was LVO two years. Two... Yeah. Yeah. The last LVO, I think. Yeah. Um, the 2020, yeah. right? Yes. Yeah. Oh, so uh, we're heading into, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're heading yeah. into the 2022 LVO, which is coming Absolutely. up in a few weeks. And so what I wanted to do was have you on and talk about a couple of things. Uh, one being, just kind of doing a recap of Invader League, you know, how that went, yep. who, who won the winning list, all that. And then maybe I thought it would be nice since we are starting to kick up tournaments and we have a lot of new players in the, you know, in the community now, they can kind of hear about tournaments from uh, someone who judges perspective. Yeah. So Yeah, absolutely. Love that. All right. Well, let's start with Invader League. Um, so now it's my understanding you you co-hosted with David Zelenka, right, for the finals on his. Yep. Yeah. Yep. I uh, so I've been uh, I've been judging with Invader for a couple of seasons now, and uh, I took on the role, uh, especially coming into single eliminations of, of the stream lead. We're trying to figure out how to reinvigorate streaming, which I think has died off uh, or not died off, but has <laughs> reduced for a number yep. of external factors. Yep. <laughs> um, and so I. Uh, but we we did coordinate a deliberate you know Diavin base hosted uh, stream of the finals. Uh, David's got a fantastic following and and he yep. he just knows what he's doing and so that was a that was a nice clean um, plan. Uh, we had some great great streamers helping out in, in single limbs. Uh, but then as as in my in my role, I abused my power and basically invited myself on to his cast <laughs> at stream. Perfect. Uh, and uh and and had a blast uh with that so yeah we we had the invader finals uh, a few weeks back um so on the other side of the holidays so i'm going to do my best to remember exactly what happened <laughs> yeah I, listen i don't know that we need a play-by-play -play, but um of course, of course. let's so so do you roughly know the the two lists that were in the finals yeah yeah just okay. so in general it was snyder versus florf two mm -hmm. excellent players who've shown up in a number of uh a uh, number of in-person and online competitions in fact i played snyder snyder uh in so at the socal open had a, oh, had a okay. fantastic top four game uh, where due to a series of early mistakes on, on my part, he absolutely, um, <laughs> leaned in and crushed me <laughs> in that game. And he's, and, uh, he's a, he's a fantastic opponent floor. If I haven't had the pleasure of meeting in person, uh, but he is also a fantastic opponent. I have played him in past, uh, one of the, one of the online leagues, um, floor brought a, so I, I think you've talked about it before, uh, invader, uh, the single eliminations due to a, a slight quirk and timing and, and despite best efforts did play on the old rg yeah uh, and the old points it did have some of the new units um but we did see uh floor bring a pretty classic rec star um i feel like he had a set of wikis in there to mm -hmm. spice it up a little bit but it was basically your your standard issue rec star uh snyder brought a uh cis list uh with dooku as the as the main uh player and going into it it was really interesting fourth had pretty much been doing the the same uh across single eliminations the the leaf blower <laughs> yeah. of star uh moves and uh, and i was all of it i was a little worried it was going to be a kind of boring game to mm -hmm. to cast um but man those two excellent players made it really really interesting and snyder played the absolute hell out of it uh getting in there uh making dooku a presence picking off some units um and just really really 
uh, putting forth on his back foot early uh, and then just doing, like I said, in my game with him, what Snyder does best is, ex- uh, is just maximizing the advantages uh, that he yep. has and playing a perfect game uh, following that. And so yep. Snyder came out on top with a Dooku list, which both of those things I was excited, really excited to see. We haven't seen Dooku show up that high very much. Um, and Snyder, <laughs> Snyder has had a few uh, both across in real life and uh, online tournaments. Um always a bridesmaids moment yeah <laughs> <laughs> with second place finishes uh and it was it was really a joy to see him uh take this one home yeah it was really interesting because i think uh, you know on probably all the podcasts not just ours but i'm sure mm-hmm. everyone was suspecting because it was the old rules that we we're definitely going to see rex star would take it again right for yep. another invader league um yep. and i we saw it go far and be very successful but i i think it's nice to see and and i think this kind of leans in the the points changes too are mm-hmm. allowing for this for the but it leans into that that kind of it's the wild west right now of legion I think so absolutely yeah, yeah. I, i've been asking a question on and lighting around on one of my casts that you know are we especially related to republic are there are the changes um did they destroy the republic or did it just open the multiverse and i think this applies across the board like you said it, yeah. it's the wild west we, we've got so many choices now yeah well and i think yeah i i definitely think it opened the door for republic to be more than just rex star right like very much so Look at mm-hmm. look! Everyone's talking about Anakin now, right? Like all of a sudden, <laughs> you're like, "Oh, Anakin's really good." And I'm going, "That never would have happened, even if they brought Anakin down, did all the same changes to Anakin, but left Rex the way he was. You never would have seen it. You still would have seen Anakin, right?" Not, yeah, not not in this kind of uh, not in this kind of interest. Um, I did. <laughs> I'll plug myself a little bit. I did have a little bit of success with Anakin in the pre <laughs> pre RG <laughs> rules down at SoCal. Um, and uh, uh, but I, I definitely got a lot more questions of, holy crap, you're running Anakin. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah. then, of course, you're running Anakin. <laughs> and so, um, yeah, no, you're, you're absolutely right. Uh, I love the variety, the combination of the, of the change changes that um, I understand some players feel they're a little heavy handed. But I think that they were the I think they did a great job of yeah. hey, what else. What else can this faction do um and and that combined with the new units that are coming in has just been a really a real joy to see yeah i agree a hundred percent and like one of the things i think it was last week we were ta- i was talking with david and bush facts about mm. how i don't think the the speeder truck the a5 for the rebels is is bad yeah. Um, I think just everybody kind of saw the nerf and went, oh, no, nerf, <laughs> and then was like, it's bad now, right? But I'm like, it still yeah. does exactly what it did before. It's a, it's slightly more expensive. But, you know, and David yeah. and I were talking about, like David said, you know, you could totally throw R2 in that still and just go get the point, put him back on, and yep. then leave, right? Yep. yep. And so I was just I'm using that as another example of, everything's changing and so much is coming out that things yeah. were like, Oh, that kind of got nerfed. But then when you look at it, you're like, well, they get nerfed that bad. Like, and then people just stop <laughs> playing it. Right. And I'm like, I think this is still really good. Um, yeah. You know. Yeah. And, and the, the speeder shark's a great example. I think uh, mm-hmm. it, it, it was a very powerful unit. <laughs> it was, yeah. was a pretty obvious ways to be, play it powerfully um uh pre rg uh i think the, the it got a little more expensive and then the timing of some of its key upgrades yeah. uh changed as well which really changed the dynamic um and, and puts it does put a lot more decisioning on it um kyle's talked on here a lot about uh what is it, it the, the mode one mode two something like yeah. that where the, the automatic decisions and the uh the ones you have to think about and um the 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 nerfs so to speak did kind of push it more into that okay need to think a little bit more need to be more actively involved yep. it's a it's a lot less autoplay which can be a detractor in in yep. longer term competitive uh environments um that being said i just played against the bus in the evan based team league in my first round and got got spanked by it <laughs> yeah <laughs> but not by any of its old tricks um yep. but by some fantastic play and placement it is a large yep. fat uh, unit that did uh despite having that rebel list on his back heels um for a, i think it was bombing run uh the my opponent um and i apologize i'm completely blanking red five i think i think <laughs> they're all blending together this last uh, month is a terrible I, blend of everything yeah i totally um, get it yeah. <laughs> uh he he did a fantastic job of end game getting that thing in there and and physically blocking any approach that i had to 
to block R2. And so we were we were even on objective points and he he didn't have, didn't even have R2 in the bus. He just he just body blocked <laughs> with the bus. Uh, so th- there's that. a lot of things yeah, there's a lot of things that uh that it can do. Um and yeah, it's I love I love the I love the world of Legion when when there is that kind of open creativity. Mm-hmm. Um where where it is going to demand that that sort of thing. And, and I think that's only going to keep happening more and more as yep. we see more and more units, more and more We've got these um, battle forces and shadow collective stuff coming yep. out, and, and that all sorts of crazy stuff is going to start happening. And and um, the skill in competitive legion is going to be adapting to the situation in front of you that you may or may not have perfect uh, knowledge yep. and experience of. Uh, yeah, and and we've talked a lot about it. You know, just uh, if you are a excellent pilot and you know your list mm-hmm. better, you don't even really have to know the other lists. Like it's good mm-hmm. to have you know, a yep. rudimentary yep. knowledge of it. But if you just know your list and know exactly what it does, what it's good, what it's bad at, and you run it to perfection, you yep. can be, uh, you can be a competitor on, in any uh, competitive tournament right now, I think. Yeah, I, I completely agree with that. Absolutely. Yep. So, okay. So a little tangent there on. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. But uh, what, what was like, what's your recap on the overall tournament? I th- you oh, know, for Invader? Yeah, for Invader. What's yeah. It? Go ahead. Uh, yeah, well, Invader, a uh, huge turnout once again. Awesome to see, I, I mean, multiple hundreds of people <laughs> signing up for the round robins. Um, wait lists always extend out. Um, we're excited to keep going, uh, and, and we're already planning on on next season. Um, round robin phase was was a lot of fun. Single elimination. Uh, we had some good, good, good comp- competitive games coming mm-hmm. into that. Um, it was in a weird place because of the yeah the. It's not, it's not just that we played by the old rules it's that we all knew and everyone else was playing by the new rules like a week or two into single eliminations which, <laughs> which created this kind of um dysmorphic experience yeah. <laughs> for, for everything but it was a really i think it was a really cool last last uh blast of that of that old rule set and, and a real opportunity to see how some things shake out and some some good creative play um I mentioned the streaming thing already. We 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 had some challenges getting more games streamed. I think mm-hmm. uh, I think that's a, the biggest factor on that. Really, is people are tired, people are busy yep. with a lot of other things. Yep. Parts of parts of lives are opening up. Parts of lives are still really hard, and it's a long time to commit. Um, I have a personal, <laughs> like I got a taste of in real life Legion, and and I. I have to drag myself back to TTS. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, I think. Uh, and I think that happened to both uh, the audience and the streamers, especially mm-hmm. too. Um, so, and, and there's a, there's a chicken of the egg thing. So we're thinking about a couple of different ways to how we can kind of make that, uh, make that better, really open it up and lower barriers of entry for both streamers and audience um, yeah. and player players. Although the, although the third in that time on that, they'll, they'll just do their thing. Yeah. Um, we saw some, you know, Rexstar made it to the top, but I think we saw some good variety uh, mm-hmm. throughout um, and um yeah, it, we rolled it a great, great, um, uh, great sportsmanship all, th- all the way through and looking looking forward to the next season. We're rolling right into Yavin Base Team League going on now. Yeah. But um, and LJ made the announcement that uh, he's taking a step back as the the grand poobah <laughs> of Invader <laughs> League. We are evolving into a little bit more of a, uh, a collective staff uh, mm-hmm. structure. And so we're really excited to see what can happen. No, none of the names that you know are really going away. Even LJ is not going away. He's probably still going to help us judge. Um, but in terms of the the uh, the single single leader with a hierarchical structure, we've got a, a, a great team with Ghost Walking and Nasty and me. And I'm sure I'm missing. I know I'm missing others. I think yeah. Droid Rules has been doing great stuff on the, on the maps. Um, and so we're we're looking at everything that uh, that we've we've learned, and we're we're going to incorporate, uh, build on this solid foundation, and get ready for after this Yavin based team league to kick off season eight. So. Yeah, it's it's interesting. I always, you know, I always have this debate internally with myself before every Invader League of whether or not I'm going to join because yeah. it's and, and you know I I love Legion, right? Obviously, um, but it's tough because as yeah. we get more players and as it opens to the wider world, right? Like trying to schedule a match is almost mm-hmm. damn near impossible sometimes. You know, depending yeah. on matchups, and so um, but 
you know, and, and I, everybody knows I have my own gripes with TTS, but, <laughs> but um, overall, you know, I've, I, I love that it's a thing and I love that people, yeah. especially during COVID, it was great, oh, right? Because there's nothing oh, else going on. So, yeah. Um, okay. it, it, it undoubtedly kept, kept my interest and a lot of people's interest in the community interest yeah. in the game alive through COVID. It was fantastic. Well, and there was oh. even people we were talking to that had never even played an in real life game. Yeah. They've only played oh, yeah. on TTS. And I was like, <laughs> oh man, that's crazy. Yeah. Uh, Florf is actually one of those. I think his first in real life game after playing for over a year was at uh, either the Dallas or Lone Star. Yeah, uh, right. open. <laughs> Uh, I will. I will come. On. One of the things I, I don't think it's set in stone in a solid decision, but we are looking at how that scheduling challenge that you mentioned. Yeah. Um, and uh, you and I had the pleasure of being in the same round robin pod yeah. uh, a couple seasons ago. And yep. even that, even that cross country uh, three hour <laughs> difference can be difficult to schedule. So we are looking at how we can mitigate uh, if there are ways to mitigate that uh, in addition to like the international scheduling challenges that we have sometimes. Yeah, and it's just interesting, right? Because like you said, uh, even for you and I to do this East Coast. West Coast is really, yeah. it's really hard because you're like, well, I'm available at 8 p.m. my time. I'm like, dude, yeah. I'm asleep. What are you talking about? Yeah, I knew, and I knew you would be when yeah. I offered yeah. <laughs> conversation. Yeah, uh, but yeah, no, it's uh, but you know, it's interesting, and um, mm-hmm. yeah, I look forward to seeing what you guys are are you know going to do for the next season. And again, I'm going to have that in inside turmoil, and I'll probably I'll decide last minute. Uh, whether or not I'll join, but looking forward to it. Awesome. Um, I would, uh, I would, I would just plug for anyone who doesn't know and who, who listens to this for Invader Round Robin is intended to be the the open and friendly friendly yep. to newcomers uh, turn. I think the I think the first Invader League I played was probably one of the first tournaments I played um, at, at while well, playing Legion and. Um, you know what? Maybe maybe you're not going to make it out of your pod. It, it can yep. be tough to tough to get out of the pod, but you're going to get five really great games um, with, yep. with some great great opponents and some good opportunities to learn. And I, I uh, encourage everyone to sign out for that. And then the single eliminations is intended to be more competitive. Yeah. Uh, so. And as someone who's never made it to single limbs, I I have fully enjoyed the round robins. They've always been <laughs> a pleasure to play in, and and you always meet super cool people, you know, which is great. So yeah, yeah, absolutely. So besides what we talked about, uh, do was there any other takeaways from mm-hmm. Invader League that you think could potentially impact competitive Legion moving forward? Or do you think that the points mm. changes and stuff have kind of erased any learnings that we've come <laughs> we've come from? <laughs> um, uh, they've. I don't know, erased is the term I'd use, but they've definitely rebalanced. Well, yeah. that's, that's just reusing the term. They've definitely reset expectations in a lot of ways. We did use the uh, the four card flip um, mm. for uh, for turn zero, which was which was cool to see. And I think we have been seeing a little bit more of we've been seeing passing used yeah. a lot more in in uh, turn zero, um, which uh, which is kind of cool to see. It that that is definitely more of a mental game. Um, really having an understanding of um, relative value of the cards to your list and to your opponent's list that this is the turn zero play is probably one of the areas that um, knowing your opponent's list um, is, is really important uh, recognizing what they're good at and things yep. that you're both good at who's better at <laughs> naturally uh, I like to say I've, I've said for a while I, 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 I don't think games are decided turn zero but I think the difficulty setting is set yep. there it's like a like if i'm turning a video game on uh I'm, I'm choosing either you know play halo in rookie mode or or what is that like insane mode yeah um and uh the the, the trick is we're both two players in in legion are setting two different difficulty settings <laughs> so i could be i could set myself on insane uh and set my opponent up on easy uh, which isn't a good situation uh or, or or try to find a way where we're both playing on hard so yeah. All right. Yeah. Well, that was good. So that was Invader League. I'm excited to Mm -hmm. see the next season. Um, So the next thing I wanted to talk to you. So so for those of you who don't know, you know, Keegan does help judge with Invader League, Mm -hmm. but he's also judged several uh, in real life tournaments as well. Um, Keegan and I had and and Nima had a great (laughs) discussion at the last LVO about 
judge calls in our yeah. table and, <laughs> and it's totally unrelated by this is the first time we've talked in two years yeah. <laughs> <laughs> i swear i had nothing to do with it um but you know i and and i'll use that as an example so we can jump mm-hmm. in so so yeah. just uh nima and i were on the i guess the top table for that day on the stream table yep. keegan was our judge and before we even started because i had a tank um, you know, the Gav tank, yep. we had several questions for you. Yep. So as a judge, um, you know, a lot of them were relation to where I could deploy because the mm-hmm. deployments were a little odd. Um, how, if I could drive over certain terrain, what height terrain, you know, where we were, yep. because it was kind of a skewed and, and neither, yep. uh, and it wasn't that Nima and I were arguing at all. We just, we didn't know. And we couldn't yep. really like yeah. work, you know, work it out. So as a judge, when you get questions like that, like how do you how do you walk through that? Yeah, no, it's a it's a great question, uh, and I will say that this particular scenario and this particular judge call we're talking about is simultaneously one of the best examples of a judge call, and especially from a player's perspective of a reason to call a judge, and also an example of one of my least favorite judge calls I've ever had to make. <laughs> <laughs> So to set, to set the stage a little bit more for this one in particular, uh, like you said, you were you were running a Gav tank, which has been discussed uh, up and down the Legion versus having some challenges, uh, yep. height challenges. Yep. <laughs> um, and this uh, this particular table had uh, some uh, some literature. I believe it was um, Outrider Dan's uh, uh, Star Tours table. Yep. Uh, if, yep. I, if I remember right, um, he has some crates uh and and some terrain on that that are beautiful and thematic and wonderful and exactly half the height uh of a gav tank give or take 0.1 inches it was the give or take yeah (laughs) that was the real challenge um so the the reason this was one was is just one of a great example of a judge call is you and nima had an incredibly civil discussion. You have a ton of respect for each other. You have a wonderful fake rivalry, but you actually respect each other. Yes, yes. Um, and you were at a true impasse. And yeah. when you when you achieved that, when you re- both recognized you were at that impasse, you didn't dig in, get defensive, um, worry that you had to solve it. Um, mm-hmm. You didn't come at it with a scarcity mindset. You're like, hey, we have a solution. Let's call it judge. Yep. Um, let's take it out of our hands because we definitely both have personal preferences and biases. And let's put it uh, in the hands of a judge. And that's exactly what I hope that any player does uh, at any tournament I judge or into any tournament I, I play with. Um, yep. Because get judge calls early and before emotions get heated are, are the best way to keep the game moving, keep that friendly competitive spirit alive that I love about Legion community, Legion games, uh, and, and just solve problems. So you all did that, brought me in. And like I said, I, mean, I think we broke out <laughs> We, we found a ruler somewhere. Yep. We, 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 we got real was, serious about yeah, it. I, yeah. was, I was really low and really close in. And I, uh, I you know, it, it really came down to a coin toss uh, yep. for me. And and when it was a coin toss, it was, uh, it, it, was it was like, okay, it's, I think, I think it's just above, just above half. And therefore the, the tank can't go over it. Um, and I knew that that was really screwing you. Uh, I, I was, sad about that <laughs> yeah and, and uh, to fill in because the other thing if i remember correctly i think it was advanced position no it was something it, where i think I, it was it, i think it was long march or, on that table um because you only had one other option to go no or maybe, because, maybe because, you just ended up playing like the lowest long march. You know? yeah or yeah i think it was advanced positions because okay. the reason i remember that is because i only had range one to deploy and yeah. anywhere for the tank. Oh God. And so yeah. I was like, I need to deploy here. Cause I couldn't get out of any of the other corners. Yeah. And the, and the reason we were battling over this was because, um, back then, so they changed the rules, but with oblong mm-hmm. bases, they changed the rules because of me, uh, and this particular <laughs> yeah. match. Um, but because the oblong base, you had to deploy at an angle that's right. uh, in the deployment yeah. you had you had the to be entire, completely in. yeah yeah and so that was the whole thing where it's like okay well these are only two places that this tank can even go yeah. on this table so yeah. uh i'm gonna drive over that and and then yeah. nemo was like i don't think you can and i'm like dude i'm telling you it's half and then yeah <laughs> and then right like you said you know and that that's why it kind of pressured that but totally. yeah I, and totally. that's you know that's what we encourage everyone is that um, yeah, sometimes emotions can be high because mm-hmm. 
anything competitive, any sports, any type of competitive situation, you want to win. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, I always yeah. want to win. Nemo wanted yeah. to win. We all wanted yeah. to win, right? Um, and the only loser was really Keegan in that whole situation because yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he had to make that call. But, um, you know, and, and yeah, we were we definitely debated and um, it didn't mm-hmm. get emotionally heated, but we were definitely yep. debating back and forth and like arguing about it. And, you know, and like you said, we just needed to and we encourage that all the time that it's try to take the emotion away from it and understand yeah. that you're both just looking at it from different angles and that you just need somebody impartial to come in and say, okay, yeah. you know, here, here's, here's how I see it. And this is my yeah. call. Yeah. I am pleased to say that that was the most difficult judge call I had to make. Um, most of the time I was, it was awesome when there was just a mis, mis- agree, uh, sorry, disagreement or misunderstanding yeah. of the rules. Um, it was just a quick, um, Hey, judge what's how does this work and i can either uh you know i either know it off the top of my head because i spent a couple of weeks ahead of a big tournament yeah. like that rereading the rg a lot or i also might i have a technique i just carry my ipad around with the rg on it yep. um and i'm i'm just ready to do that so um yeah the, the, those for anyone who's thinking about judging um the the, the decide deciding the fate of jay versus nima is the, <laughs> is the rarity in most of my judge calls um it's it's almost always a, a good solid experience uh and you know i i one of the thing one of my one of my things about approaching judging um we talked about how emotions can run high you're spot on yep. about wanting to i mean how the backstory on that you two had played each other in the previous lvo yep <laughs> And he beat you and made, yep. it, made it out. This was game four yep. of your day. So the winner of this one was going to make it to the next one. Yeah. So there's a, a plenty of natural emotion and, and you don't even have to have those stakes to have, have the emotion that can come into it. Yeah. I and always... I think, you know, and leading into it too, it was funny because um, we weren't supposed to be on that table. If I remember correctly, that was the oh. stream. That was the stream table. It was. It and was, someone yeah. else had requested that they didn't want to be streamed. And of course, oh, we, of course it. we would yeah. honor that. That, right yeah and so yeah. they asked us to move up there and i was like i don't want to be on that table and nima agreed <laughs> and he was like i don't want to be on that table either but then we we took the hit for the stream you know and oh man yeah so it was yeah. it was i as cool as a cucumber as i seemed inside i was burning a lot like oh just i know i know you so were so upset <laughs> like i was just going yeah and it, and you know because sometimes i think <clears throat> outside of player control right and this is a great mm-hmm. judge thing it's like sometimes there's things outside of player control that you there's nothing you can do it just is what it is and you disagree and you have to bring somebody else in and this was a perfect example because it was it's not something nema did it wasn't a line of sight issue it wasn't like yep. a rules question it was yeah. uh, what is this piece specifically yep. to me yep you know yeah yeah and you guys were doing everything right in terms of discussing terrain ahead of time that would have been even even worse uh, <laughs> uh of, a, of an experience if it had been mid-game yeah. um and and debating it and and similar stakes um but yeah so when i'm judging one of the things that uh, i'm cognizant of this potential emotion stuff so whenever i hear a judge call and whenever so as soon as i come up to the table uh one of the i always just approach with the hey guys what's going on mm. in this in kind of a make preemptive diffusing of situation bringing in a, a a, a, a lighter weight to the conversation and, yep. and hoping to hoping to kind of reset anything that's happened ahead of time um especially if the if conversations if if it took a little longer than maybe it could have to call a judge um yeah and, and yeah, i guess that's the other thing right like at bigger tournaments like at an lvo or an adepticon mm-hmm. there's generally multiple judges but yep. when you have 30 plus tables yeah. sometimes there's three four judge calls at the same time, right? Oh yeah. So oh, yeah. that's the other upsetting thing. And and what I found, um, and you guys are very good at this is, um, and for those of you who have never played in a tournament, you're worried about something like this, is a lot mm-hmm. of times the judges, if they recognize that it took a long time to get there because of other mm-hmm. things that were going on or that the decision took a long time, that they mm-hmm. will add time on to your game. So you're not like yep. Yep. stuck, you know, going, oh man, we just took 30 minutes to figure that out. You know, now I'm now yeah. I'm done. Yeah. Yeah. We, we have latitude in in being able to, uh, and we talk to each other and we coordinate so that we, if there's an individual table that had a particularly sticky challenge, um, we can't, we can't add time. We, you know, we, that's also one of the big reasons, um, we ask that make, make your judge calls early. So we, we don't need to spend that, uh, amount of time. If, if you're finding yourself 
honestly, if you got, if you all aren't deciding something in two to three rounds of conversation, uh, and it's not, it's not something you don't want to just roll a, roll a red defense die for, um, just call a judge. Uh, yep. we, we want to be there. We're, we're there to help. Um, there is, we do not show up with any judgment. <laughs> we, uh, we're, we're not there to police you, uh, and, and, punish you we do have you know we have warnings and things like that but that's for that's just to help kind of keep the tone of play where yeah. it needs to be uh, no one's get no one's getting a warning just for calling a judge so let me let me ask you this this is this here yeah. this is this is going to be a sticky question All for right. you All so right. i'm here really excited about this <laughs> so let's let's use the example of mine and nema's game and right. that particular thing was not a it's not a very distinct black or white rules question yep yeah do you find that do you listen to the players and hear their arguments for and against the mm -hmm. ruling and then take that into consideration for for said ruling uh, in tr uh so there's a timing piece on this question so yeah. if i'm making a judge ruling um and and most of our especially our real life tournament rules documents are explicit judge calls are final um you can appeal but uh, I've never seen a head judge <laughs> overturn right. uh, a marginal judge call. It's it's only if the judge like a hundred percent got a rule wrong mm -hmm. that that's going to happen. So if if it's something that there's a matter of debate, uh, then you can pretty much expect that your table judge call is going to be final. Um, now, what you what you just described though, I, I before I make a ruling. I hear both sides. Um, and there's there's a few different reasons for this. One, I just need more information. Um, I want to understand how we got to the situation. I want to understand the components. Um, I want, and most importantly, I want each of the players to feel like they have had an opportunity to voice their experiences yeah. um, and that their perspectives are considered. Um, so it's really important that I hear both sides. And so a judge call is probably going to take a couple of minutes at least, unless it's a quick, hey, how can I jump? Can I use jump twice in a turn? <laughs> yeah. Things, things that are easy. <laughs> like that. Um, any sort of situation, like uh, especially like your Nemas, where it's a, a terrain definition call, uh, I definitely, e even if I can walk up to a table and know how I would I would decide yeah. it's going to be, I, I want to hear an opportunity. I want to give an opportunity for both to be said. And this this comes back to what I was saying about just even when I just show up to the table. My one of my biggest goals as a judge is to is to um, encourage and support that friendly, com friendly, competitive culture and yep. um, environment at the table. And the the best way to it can be it can be hard when things get really tense, and it can be hard to imagine resetting to that. But I, mm -hmm. I'm a firm believer that tensions can be diffused very quickly through good conversation and just an understanding and an opportunity to feel heard. Yep. Um, so yeah, I'm absolutely. That's a really long answer to. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but you said it was going to be a sticky question, so I I, I took yeah. advantage of that. And um, it was right. Cause I think, <laughs> I think part of that is, you know, and, and you're right. It, it's all dependent on um, what the call is and how subjective mm -hmm. it is. Right. If it's a yeah. black and white call, like there's, you just go, no, here it is. Rules is written yeah. here. Yeah. Here's where we are. But, but when there's controversial calls that could go either way that don't mm -hmm. have a black and white answer. Yeah. I just, you know, I just thought I want people to hear that. I knew the answer, but like, you know, I think people need yeah. to know that they're being heard and that it's not just the judge has a predetermined bias that they're coming in with. They're like, okay, yep. well, let's yep. look at the situation. Where are we at? Like, what, why is this being called? You know, you know, and, and trying to make something make sense, especially if it can be subjective to the game versus, yeah. you know, just a, oh no, this is, oh, this barricade is always this height is always this height. And, and no one can tell me otherwise. It's like, well, you know, he can't really deploy anywhere else. <laughs> yeah. Know, right. Yeah. In, in this case, I could, or there was one other place I just didn't want to deploy was the answer, but you know, yeah. um, I, I think overall <laughs> you made the right call, even though I, I wasn't happy about it in the moment, I, but I, I, I respected it and took it. <laughs> and, and that, and that's, that's all we ask for uh, as a staff and judging team uh, fr from the players. Um, but here, my, my quick pitch, we, none of us are paid for this, right? <laughs> so, um, getting hostile and angry with a judge uh, is getting hostile and angry with a volunteer who's who's only there because they love the game and they love like creating these events and experiences. Yeah. Um, and I've I I will admit that I don't know maybe this is pandemic related uh, uh, losing patience, but <laughs> I have been a little quicker to remind players that arguing with the judge yeah. itself is warning worthy in some of the events <laughs> that I've 
had the experience of it over the last couple of years. Um, and, and usually that's enough to remind folks that, okay, yeah. that there's a dynamic here. Right. And, and I would say at the end of the day, we as a community and as a game, we're not at a level where there's anything real on the line. Like, you know, yeah. maybe at your local <laughs> store, there's like $50 in credit or something, yeah. but like, that's the yeah. biggest, you go to Adepticon or any of these other LVO, it's just, you get first place. You get a bunch yeah. of swag and a bunch of cool stuff that, you know, yep. six up supply or somebody made. <laughs> you like that? Force for, for, for I do appreciate <laughs> yeah, that. For, yeah. force flat, I think force flasks are changing the tone of the competition. <laughs> I think so. That's all I've been hearing about is these force flasks. Um, so, you know, in and at the end of the day, it's not like it's 10 grand on the line, like in like right. a 40K yeah. tournament or a magic yeah. tournament, you know, yeah. like yeah. there I'm a little bit more forgiving as far as people being aggressive because you're like yeah. i don't know 10 grand can be life-changing to some people yeah, so absolutely. i get it but absolutely. this one it's just you can you just walk away and go i got first place at lvo that that's yeah. what you get so like you know giving everyone a break <laughs> that yeah. your opponents you know the judges the staff like just it's just a game right now we're just having fun <laughs> <laughs> you know, yes, I'm competitive. I'm just as competitive as everybody else. But, yep. you know, at the end of the day, I realized that really yeah. Nemo, oh, yeah. ne Nemo won and I, our rivalry continues. And other than that, yep. I really didn't <laughs> lose anything, <laughs> you yeah. know, so. Yeah. Yeah. And it's great. It's great that you call that out. Uh, and, you know, and also oh, uh, having grace for each other and ourselves that sometimes it can feel really important. I, I just played a Yavin based team league game and. I made a I made a mistake and I really wished uh my opponent um it was it was a you know game goes one way or the other mistake it was it was a really dumb mistake on my part and um I knew it and he jumped it was you know it was a standby play I, I was an idiot I I said okay I take it aim and then shoot and he was like well I'm going to spend the standby and shoot the only thing that can win you the game <laughs> and, and I was like ah oh, god you know I didn't mean to say aim it wasn't an intention. I'd love to take it back. I also know that it's your choice. Um, and he, you know, he, he wanted to win the game. And, right. and, and, and so he's like, no, I'm going to spend the standby and, and take it. And I was tilted as F. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. I, I, I admit that I got super tilted at that and I got, I got really frustrated. Um, but I, I don't blame him for that decision. That's, that was right now. Yeah, that was the, the, the play to make, to win the game. And, I, I had him on his back foot. I would have won the game if right. he hadn't taken that. Um, and uh, even though I think I, I might've made a different decision, um, that doesn't mean that, you know, that doesn't mean that I, my anger has <laughs> justification. Right. Right. I was just, I was tired and I really wanted to win it. And I was mad at myself. Right. Um, and, and that happens. And so having grace for each other when that happens, giving, getting, yeah. you know, and, and he, and he was great. Like at the end of the game, he won. I conceded. He won, and I was like, "Hey, this has gone a little long. I need to. I need to jump off." Um, and usually, I like to talk to folks yep. after after the game, and I think people, I think people usually like to talk. But it was like it was really. I think it was really clear that I was just. I didn't have it in me, yeah. and he was really gracious about that. He's like, "Hey, no problem, man. Uh, yeah. Good game." And and I appreciate I appreciate that. So. Yeah, I think that's a great example, right? Like when we're at these, and 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 I have to do that to myself too is recognize when I'm mad at myself yes. versus <laughs> mad at my opponent for doing something, yeah. you know, dirty, where if it's a mistake I made and I'm just angry because I'm an idiot, well, yeah. I can't really take that out on my opponent, right? Yeah. Like they, they didn't do anything. I was just yep. the dumb one in this situation. And yeah, I yep. think that that's, you know, something that we can all take um, home with us and like, think about, and when you're, when you're getting heated in a tournament go, okay, am I mad at myself because I yep. made a mistake or I'm <laughs> losing based on my own merits, or yep. am I truly upset with this person for something that they did? And then yeah. that'll help you make other calls going down the line of the game, like judge calls, right? Like yeah. if you feel yeah. like your opponent's doing something insane that they shouldn't be doing, <laughs> then that's a judge call. Right. But if you're just yep. mad at yourself because you said aim instead of standby, yep. you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I'll be, you know, I was mad at myself because <laughs> it was, I have, I have a, a history of snatching, uh, snatching defeat from the jaws of victory. <laughs> I'm just making, make doing, like getting on a roll and then being tired or being casual and making a dumb mistake that just yeah. completely flips it. And I was super mad at myself because um, I knew that the, I, I hit, I was like, God, 
damn it, I just did it again. <laughs> yeah. uh, I can't believe I did it again. And after after feeling like really good about this, and and yeah. and that's and that you're, you're spot on. That's where the anger was. It was at myself. And, and I think it's so easy to direct that at someone else. Though. It really is. Yeah, especially <laughs> in a competitive manner, right? Like, yeah. and yeah, if, if for anybody who's played sports, like that's usually mm-hmm. good to be able to direct it towards your <laughs> opponent, right? Because you're like, all right, I'm going to get them, you know? But yeah. um, when you're playing a tabletop game, not yeah. always, not it's always not, great. Not. Yeah. Physical dominance actually is a detractor. In <laughs> yeah, tabletop game. Right. <laughs> um, but also, you know, I think with TTS is, um, is less forgiving than in real life anyway. It's like so. overall, yeah. like the, the, like the game, the mode, because you're not face to face, like everything yeah. is just less forgiving than, yeah. than in, in real life and yeah there's something about it that just kind of like i i do this too where like in your brain i think because you and i've played in tts mm-hmm. before where you i'm like whoa i didn't mean to do that like yep but then i'm like oh well i already did it right like yep. and because it's yep. i don't know you're not just connecting <laughs> the same way you are as so like when you, when you got your hands on like tactile things um yeah yeah tts also brings a, a capability of precision that is not reflected yep. In, yeah. uh, in in real life that um that that can definitely spiral <laughs> yes that is that is for sure yes um all right so i have one more judge question for you yeah. and just to get your kind of thoughts on this so i suspect because the way the world is right now and and delays and <laughs> shipments and delays and stuff you know are we we have delays everyone's just experiencing delays and trouble yeah, getting absolutely. things so absolutely. i suspect in the future we're going to see delays in uh units or we're going to see mm-hmm. canada and europe and uh, you know australia getting units and maybe the us isn't or vice versa right yeah so yeah. where what's your thought uh, because most of the tournaments in the U S have been allowing proxies for all the units mm-hmm. that have been released in the world. So what's yep. your thoughts on that? And, and how can I, as a player best bring a proxy to, to, to be, you know, the most, um, uh, I don't know, I guess, uh, the words failing <laughs> me now, but like, you know, to be the most yeah. fair to my opponents yeah. when I'm playing. Yeah. Oh, that's a great second half of that question. Um, so first off, I love, I love the decisions that were made. I think LVO started it, uh, and then other tournaments have been adopting it. Mm-hmm. For so specifically Yoda and the Wookiees. Yep. Um, th- we've got a release date. <laughs> Seems like it's on track uh, for a couple of weeks from now, but uh, it's almost guaranteed that 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 that's a container at the bottom of the ocean. Yes. <laughs> yeah. From the original one. <laughs> um, the uh, the for anyone not familiar, the proxy rule is uh, that Yoda and the uh, Wookiees are going to be legal at LVO, uh, despite release date timings. Mm-hmm. Um, they are, um, I think, actual models are also going to be exempt. From, uh, I'm not going to say that. <laughs> LJ <laughs> says so there's something about painting. I can't remember where they landed. Yeah, uh, LJ, I think LJ talks about it. Neiman talks about it. Uh, the ruling that they made was that those uh, the the models and the cards in those boxes are eligible to be proxied. Um, at LVO, um, uh, just because uh, mm-hmm. the, we want we want them in there, we want them to play. We don't want we don't want an advantage to happen for people who either are traveling from um, international uh, sites that have them, or for people who have you know we don't want to be pay to play where right. you're paying. Um, and I admit I evaded Yoda. I was anxious. Not I haven't even played it. I'm not going to. I'm not, I'm not going to play it before the, <laughs> the, yeah. the street date. But I I wanted to get the thing painted. Um, uh, we didn't want that advantage to be there. So um, PAX uh, adopted that uh, and mm-hmm. we saw a Yoda list win. Uh, uh, others are adopting that. I'm actually, I take it back. I am going to play Yoda before I'm playing a skirmish tournament locally uh, oh, next nice. week. Yeah. That's, that's, a, that's allowing proxies <clears throat> for, for that box. Um, and uh, uh, so that's, that's, the that's the direction i think that's a great great direction i think it's it's a good it's easy for lvo because it's not an official yep. flg or uh, amg yep. event um pax actually had official amg price support uh which um which was which was awesome um but at, and that i think you know there wasn't a conversation it was understood that <laughs> this yep. was a reasonable approach um you know, we'll see what AMG's policies are as we get. Uh, we're hearing rumors of of more deliberate organized play coming forward. So hopefully, we have some allowances at that level. But at the individual TO level right now, I think it's a great great approach to to level that playing field 
of, uh, of availability. Uh, your second question I really love about how can I, as a player, like make that uh, the, the, the best approach. Uh, there's so many different ways to approach that. First, look at your tournament organizer's rules and, and tournament documents to see how they explicitly say it. Um, mm -hmm. There'll be some that it, it could vary where they say you have to have the physical, you, know, you have to have a printout of the cards or you have to have something you know, there, or you, or you don't. Um, so know what the rules actually are. Know if they have a, uh, if they have a specific other mini to be replaced or if they have specific minis that shouldn't be used in their place. Um, and then within those rules, um, the, the, the best guidance I can give is remember that you want it to, you want to minimize confusion on the table. So, um, if, if I didn't have a <laughs> bootleg Yoda, um, <laughs> I would probably want to bring something that was very clearly either very clearly Yoda or very clearly not anything else that it could yeah. be uh, on the table. And that's, and that's going to be an important thing. Wookiees is another um, big story, probably a little bit more of a challenge. Um, if you don't have, if you're bringing Wookiees as a proxy to one of the events and uh, you don't have the physical models um, Republic uh, so you'll want to do a couple of things. One, you'll want to be clear that they're not, you know, don't use ARP troopers for Wookiees. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> um, uh, best case scenario, actually, I, I, I'd argue is use rebel Wookiees if you can uh -huh. get your hands on them. Um, the other thing is uh, the Wookiees have different heavies uh, and the Wookiee chieftain is a different unit. So be sure that you have a way that is not confusing there. So if you're if you're bringing rebels and Wookies and you're going to blend the two types of Wookies now, be sure that it uh, you have a way that is super clear and 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 like a dot on the base is great, a dot on the base is not obvious. Yep. Um, is super clear what uh, what that mini represents in terms of uh, in terms of heavies or unit leaders, etc. So. Yeah, especially if you're like like if you have mix right like where you have one yeah. wookie who's maybe the longbow and the other wookie yep. is yeah um yeah. because that you know because if you're bringing all units with the same heavies it doesn't like we, we you know you just yeah. like these all have you know long bows and you're like, exactly okay, yeah. got it yeah. and it's this yeah. many that's the longbower um but yeah, yeah. So okay, that's cool. So I'll give you one more one more question. This is okay. this is not a judge question. This is okay. you. What <laughs> what do you think in 2022? What is going to be the list to look out for in 2022? Oh man. Well, I mean, that's I'm going to dodge that question just <laughs> but with 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 a callback. It's the wild west right yeah. now. Um, <laughs> we've got we've got so many different things out there. I will say that there, you know, three weeks ago, I think there was a lot of heat around. Uh, you know, multiple dwarf spider droids on the CIS. And three weeks later, I'm not sure that that's, I think there's still something that needs to be considered, but I'm not yep. seeing a ton of, uh, ton of worry about that. I think the, uh, the winning list at PAX, the Yoda Padme Saber tank is, has some heavy dominance, but I also wouldn't be surprised to see maybe a little rules tweak <laughs> at yep. some point um, because there is a level of uninteractivity i think kyle's talked about this yeah, yeah. <laughs> <In> that, <list. laughs> yeah. Um, that that maybe maybe is beyond the spirit of the game um that, that it's the kind of thing that usually gets addressed at some yep. point um i think yoda's incredibly powerful and i think yoda's um barrier to access uh y yoda and palp are comparable in a lot of ways but i think yoda is easier to access his power. It's, yeah. it's a little bit easier to understand him. So I think he's going to be a big player in things. I think Wookiees are absolutely dominant in the number of hit points they have and the, and yeah. the flexibility they have and some of the rules. Um, uh, yeah, you I'm thoroughly the, dodged I'm, I'm, that question. That's fine. Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, I'm, also, I, I'm, I'm the worst to ask for hot takes. I hate, hot, I hate giving hot takes. Hot takes, like, hot I, takes. I, yeah, I mean... <laughs> that's yeah, all, right. Han, all right so, so someone's gonna do well with han that's gonna yeah <laughs> uh, uh bushman likes now. that yeah yeah <laughs> yeah i mean hell, um, before the rules i played a game with, with nima he put han and sabine in a double land speeder and kicked my ass but oh, that's you know, so nima, nima. nima always yeah. kicks my ass <laughs> uh, dude, yeah. he and he always has like he i love how nima plays because he always takes whatever is the like the meta or whatever is good at the moment and then he puts some twist on it and yeah. you're like oh yeah whoa you know and that was that's uh, that's what i've always appreciated about playing him is that yeah. i'm like this is going to be an insane game that i've never like 
every round is going to be challenging just because he's going to do something wacky yep. that I'm not expecting, you know? Yeah. And so, but so, all right, Keegan, why don't you let everybody know where they can find you at and awesome. if they want to buy super cool stuff <laughs> from you. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So uh, you, you mentioned it earlier. I appreciate that. Uh, I'm, I'm co-founder of a uh, six up supply. My uh, neighbor uh, and I, at a uh, pandemic project where he, he really likes 3D printers and 3D modeling. And I uh, really like the output of those. <laughs> and I don't <laughs> like any of the maintenance. <laughs> we've uh, we've grown to a number of different products. Um, a lot of great gaming accessories in our premier or flagship product right now is the Force Flasks, which is a, a laser sword inspired uh, cosplay ready uh, objects that also have an embedded uh roughly five ounce flask uh inside of it um and 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 we we always like electronics so there's also integrated leds to make them light up so Perfect. you can check all check all of that out at sixupsupply.com uh you can also see um uh, we we have a nice heavy prize package coming to lvo as well uh, so if you're coming out there you've got a chance to win one of those uh, and some other bespoke fun stuff there so is uh six spelled out or is it the number Ah, great questions. Uh, the number six up spelled out uh, supply. Okay. Cool. Uh, and, th and then you can also find me. Uh, I've been, I've had the pleasure of uh, being a co-host on Le Legion 99 podcast. And then I also host a mini cast on that same feed, uh, uh, the turn zero lists. So if you, uh, and, and turn zero lists, I spend about 20 minutes interviewing uh, either ourselves <laughs> or my favorite uh, guests uh, and players from completely around the community. It's been an absolute pleasure to have have guests on. It, it's been a rarity that I've interviewed Mike or Nick uh, yeah. <laughs> lately, so that is getting guests on. So if any of your listeners want to come on and talk to me about uh, talk to me about their list that they love running, um, I'll I'll do a breakdown of that with them. We'll have a fun lightning round, um, and you can find both of those casts on the same Legion Nine Nine feed wherever you find podcasts. Awesome. I highly recommend uh, checking all of that out. You guys do the six up stuff is great. Um, and so really enjoy everything you guys have been doing. So yeah, thanks for having me on. Can't good wait good to, uh... to see you again. Yeah, I can't yeah, wait till in person. You. So <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. All right. Thanks, Keegan. Thank you. So that was Jay and Keegan talking about uh, some tournament stuff basically judging you know when to do judge calls uh, the invader league final etc so yeah I, I you know keegan mentioned so that he does the legion 99 podcast and then he has the turn zero list which is uh, like a sub podcast of that where he talks to people about their lists and they break them all down which is pretty cool so i highly recommend checking that and then also he has that six up supplies website where they they do those force flasks which i believe you have one kyle right it's in yeah it's right if you're watching right on youtube there. kyle's pointing to it on his screen which it's a lightsaber with a working led that's also what five ounce flask or something yeah, like on, that me, yeah Oh, Kyle's going to get up and get it. But yeah, so they do they do a bunch of really cool uh, 3D printed stuff. And, um, you know, Keegan's a really, really cool guy. And yeah, so Kyle's showing it now. It's it's a lightsaber. And of course, it, I'm not going to be able to get the LED to work. There we go. There you go. The yeah. LED works on it. And also it's got booze in it. Oh, I, I have yet to actually drink out of it. But this one, oh, well, I think this is the Obi-Wan <laughs> one that it opens from the bottom. Um, yeah. Oh, yes. Yeah, so that's cool. Yeah. Yeah. This one's from SoCal. Yeah. Um, so, but yeah, Keegan's a great guy. And, and, you know, we had talked about his judge call on the, on my game with Nima at the last, the, the last LVO, right? In 2020. And, um, <clears throat> and how difficult that was for him and for me and for Nima and for everybody involved. But, you know, how we got through it by being reasonable and calling the judge over early. And, you know, I think just for everybody listening, and if this is going to be your first tournament, whether it's LVO or Adepticon, you know, you should never be uh, scared to call a, a judge. That's they're there to be a third party impartial so that you can move on with the game, you know? Yep. Yep. And it's all fun, right? Which is leading us into our next topic. Fun, fun, it fun. Is. Yeah, so yeah. we're going to talk. Uh, this is actually Evan's Evan's topic. Evan yeah. just wrote an article basically on, uh, what is it, canon, canon tier rankings? 
Yes, the, the canon accuracy of the Rebels uh, was the first one. Uh, I mainly picked that because that's where that's where the initial idea came from, uh, was us having a, my friend group having a talk about how, how Lando really epitomized, uh, you know, the, the character in the show with having a bunch of different capes. And, uh, you know, he had a little sneaking thing in the beginning of Return of the Jedi. Uh, he, you know, all of his command cards cheat. And then comparing that to uh, Leia, where the uh, character in the, in the movies, uh, basically takes care of business times a million uh, and that the character in the card game is uh, kind of a disappointment in comparison. So it all kind of sprang out from there and I tried to have some fun with it. Yeah, I like it. This, this is good. Yeah, so uh, <laughs> team rankings are a controversial topic. Um, yep. But, uh, you know, so Not we're going to... This is this is based on science, uh, so yeah, pure science. if you want to argue with it, uh, just know that you know if you're arguing with uh, with my opinion, you're arguing with, with science, and uh, I I am a I am a professor, uh, I'm a doctor, so take that. You're you're entitled to your wrong opinion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. yeah this will be the definitive uh, canon accuracy <laughs> yeah. to your list <laughs> yeah we're gonna we're gonna package it up and send it to lucasfilm to let them know like how well uh <laughs> ffg was actually doing so that yep. they can you know keep an eye on amg from now on <laughs> yep so we're actually going to do empire because we did um you did rebels for your article so we're gonna yeah. hit empire for a little bit of change of pace so we're not just basically repeating the article mm-hmm. um, you know how i feel about empire so the- yeah, that's why, that's why I did, Jay. I, I wanted to I wanted to see how our opinions on this stuff compared. All right. All Empire, right. Empire is my second love amongst Legion factions. So. After your clones. No, after so I'm, I'm going like in order. So it was Rebels. Uh, and then I defected to Empire. Um, and then Droids. And now I'm on clones. So yeah. Oh, um, you finally got there. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I haven't actually painted anything yet. Um, so we'll see. It's in various states of assembly. Uh, we'll see if I have it together enough for whenever the next tournament is that I attend. Um, but um, unprofessional, Evan. <laughs> I'm gonna get a pay cut for next month's article. Yeah, month. that's yeah. right. Demotion. Yeah. Um, <laughs> all right. Well. We're going to just, let's just hit these on, uh, in order. All right. From we, the, we um, the, the Legion HQ, HQ system. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So Agent Callus. Uh, how do we want to do this? We, do we want you guys to start out and then I'll, I'll correct you at the end. I, I feel like that's the way that makes <laughs> sense. Sure. That sounds good. <laughs> yeah. So, all right. So let me, let me understand the rules. So we are ranking them on the the tier list like we did the other ones. So, okay. And it's based only on the fact of how uh, closely related they are to their canon counterpart. That's correct. And then, you know, I have a couple more rules is that first of all, like you got to think of them in the context of the faction. So we're going to talk about Boba Fett later uh, and much to his detriment. Uh, we're only going to be able to talk about his time serving the Empire, so which means that literally all the cool stuff that he's ever done on camera uh, was when he was kind of operating as a scum slash rebelish agent. Yep. So Mandalorian's out the door for him. Uh, <laughs> yep. And uh, and then the other rule is that uh, usually we'll do letters, but if you want to if you want to have like an emoji, if you want to say not applicable. You're welcome to do that because I've set that precedent already in the Rebel article. <laughs> yeah, I think Jin was your was your. Uh, yeah, Jin. Emoji, Jin was right? like the straight faced emoji. I gave a not applicable to the bus because yep. it's basically out of a West End game source book. Uh, I actually changed uh, Chewbacca's grade from an F to an S. So if you want to do that in the middle of your thoughts, feel free to do that as well. Based based on the Christmas special. Yeah. 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 <laughs> All right, so we're starting with Callus. With your criteria that you have set, 
Mm-hmm. I originally was going to give him an F because spoiler alert for everyone out there, he does defect and go to go to the other side. Um, but since we're talking about in faction, mm-hmm. um, I would I would say a B. I'm going to give him a B. I, I think, um, you know, he he's got the the cunning and, and the cards to kind of match some of his abilities from the show. And then I, you know, I think um, his bow staff probably his bow rifle staff could probably be a little bit more stronger if we wanted to match what mm-hmm. he was capable of in the show. But I would say overall a, a B uh, for that. All right. Uh, I'm going to say an A. Um, actually, I really like a lot of things that they did with Callus in, in the way that he mirrors Lando, uh, who is also sort of a very on theme character. Um, you know, Callus is a he's he's very much like Lando in that he kind of uh, starts playing for the other team at some point, uh, which is flaw card. Um, I mean, I guess I'll say that the flaw card doesn't actually do much to him. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but, that's, that's one of the issues. Yeah. But the uh, the intention is is there at least right. um, developing sympathies. So that seems good. Um, he's a uh, you know he's got cunning and contingencies. Um, that seems a little generous, given that he's kind of like the token uh, can never quite catch the good guys, bad guys, and rebels. Yeah. Um, particularly cunning. I don't know if I would have you know, said based on his rebels appearances as an empire agent that he could be, <laughs> he would be cunning. Uh, uh, but other than that, yeah, I, I like the overall thematic choices with Mr. Well, I, I think you were, I think you, you both hit on most of the points that I was going to make is that, uh, you know, his major problem is that I think probably some of the most competent things he did, he ended up doing as a rebel, which ends up kind of detracting from, his uh, his unit card a little bit. Uh, I, I agree that the the flaw card, you know, in the show he he completely switches sides. Uh, yeah. Like I feel like that should be representative of more than four suppression tokens. One of them one of them's about to go away anyway at the end of the turn. Uh, but I, yeah, I, I like I like the way his command cards work. Uh, um, you know, he he definitely he definitely is like on people's case when he is, you know, busting out the bow staff and, uh, and attacking Wiley. I, I think that the not being able to disengage from melee actually makes a lot of sense. Uh, and, um, but I actually have to give him a C because this guy has cunning and he was uh, outsmarted slash outfought by Ezra Bridger and, uh, like <laughs> several times. Uh, and that that's just gonna that's just gonna take away from things, man. Uh, that he's he's terrible. Um, and and if he's being beaten by that guy, there's really no excuse. So <laughs> C for Callus. It wasn't just Ezra though; it was the entire Ghost crew. Yeah, um, I, I feel like that since Ezra is the star of the show, yeah. That like I think he gets like kind of most of the screen time. And and I know that like Kanan is an actual Jedi, and Hera is is an actual. Uh, competent commander um but yeah I, I just think as they're being in the picture at all and being beamed by him scores you a lot of negative points there <laughs> that's fair <laughs> all right darth vader commander oh Ugh, this one's tough it, it was for me too yeah i you know i think if we had done this i don't know four months ago i probably would have completely given him an f um, but, but we're not jay yeah, yeah. uh I, well I, I guess i'm saying that out loud because i'm trying to figure out if what they what they did really cha- how much it changed because even though he's good um mm-hmm. i don't find him as scary as he should be if we if we were to look at like you know, Rogue One, the end of Rogue One, when he's coming down that hallway, just like murdering things, right? And and yeah. how scared everyone is of him at all times. Um, I find him to be not as scary on the battlefield as maybe he should be. And so I, I'd probably give him a C. I'd say a C. Okay. 
I'm going to say a B. I actually think he is, he's not as scary as the operative version of himself. Um, but that doesn't change the fact that like once he gets in, you know, he, he might take a while to get there, although now you can use burst speed. Yep. Um, but once he gets in, like there's no force user that is more of a blender than Darth Vader. Uh, and that to me fits the hallway scene perfectly. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, he's super tough. He's got a really strong lightsaber attack. He has a bunch of command cards that give him buffs. The more enemy units are around him, basically. You know, you've got like Fear of Dead Men and Master of Evil, both of which just are crying out to be used when he's just smack dab in the middle of your opponent's force. Yeah. Um, you know, he can cause wounds to his own units to make them do extra stuff. Like uh, he can pick things up and throw them around. Uh, to me, that seems he can descend on a TIE fighter onto the battlefield. Like all of these things seem super on theme to me. So, you know, I changed my mind. I'm going to actually give him an A. Yeah, oh yeah, upgrade, uh, upgrade to an A. Well, I think I think you nail it right at the end there because I, I also give him an A uh, for all the reasons you mentioned, and then I'm just going to add that burst of speed. I feel like I actually detracted from him a little bit because I just I just can't see Vader scurrying around like a field mouse around the battlefield uh, like that. I feel like he's he's so cool that. He doesn't need to walk more than one speed ever uh is that he will just like you know shamble towards you and knows that you know make you realize that you don't have a chance uh and since he's doing that the majority of the time that's i think it's the I, I think that captures the character well I, I and what what got taken away with versus speed got added back to with compel because i think that new ways was a command card that kind of captured the fact that you know, stormtroopers are going to trip over themselves to do what Vader wants you to do because otherwise they're just going to get choked anyway. Uh, but that shouldn't just be for one command card. Now he can basically do that the entire game. Yeah, I guess here here's where I detract from this and where I, where I argue with you guys is in my mind, and I, I, I I'm not I'm canon is large, right? So so maybe yeah. in the comics or something. But like, I feel like with vader i should be able to walk him directly at you right through the middle of the battlefield and i want you to be so terrified because he's just <laughs> like you know he's like force pushing atsts off the battlefield he's like you know the bus comes and he's just like and he just like you know pushes it out of the way and i i just for me there's just something missing with that where i have to be more sneaky with him in order to get him into those lines like you're talking about kyle you know like i can't just I can't just walk him up the middle of the battlefield and everybody's like crapping their pants as he's like coming at them. You know, it's, it's, it, that's, that's where my C ranking comes. I do see what you mean. If, if you've read the actual Vader down comic, like he does ridiculous things <laughs> yeah. to a wide variety of, of rebels <laughs> in that comic. And it's pretty great. Uh, so, you know, to maybe to, I think that, you know, my, I'll write an article about this eventually, probably later in the year, and maybe by then we'll know some of the details of the Vader down scenario uh, from AMG, and, and we yep. can reconsider a little bit whether they capture him well in that. Okay, that's I fair. D- I do want to mention that in Fallen Order, which is canon, is that he totally jumps 10 feet down uh, towards the end of the game, uh, so I feel like uh, <laughs> not having any jump is kind of messed up. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> All right. So, uh, Krennic, Kyle, I'll let you go. I'm going to give him a C for kind of the same reason that um, Kalos gets negative points for having cunning. I, I don't feel like Krennic is really, as far as a military commander is concerned, um, he's really that clever. <laughs> um, he's getting frequently outsmarted by Jin and Cassian, uh, who granted are you know, reasonably experienced guerrilla operatives. Um, but uh, I don't know. It just, he doesn't strike me as that clever, you know, in Rogue One. Yeah. Um, uh, Compel seems appropriate for him. You know, mm-hmm. he's constantly like basically uh, making his own troops do stuff through fear. Um, you know, Entourage Death Troopers certainly makes a ton of sense. Uh, his pistol profile seems fine based on the few times you see him shoot in Rogue One. Um, 
and his command cards are certainly i love deploy the curse <laughs> i love the fact that that is a command card for starters given that that's one of his most uh, salient lines but um i feel like annihilation looms could be a little more interesting besides just handing out suppression tokens you know the implication on that card is everybody's about to get murdered by the death star um i feel like that should do more than just hand out a couple suppression tokens <laughs> Yeah, I so, yeah I'm gonna I'm gonna give him a C. Um, yeah, I mean, for all the reasons you kind of named, um, and and like his his one pip voracious ambitions, I I don't it doesn't really fit him. It doesn't make any sense, like canon wise, if we're talking canon wise, like because it makes him seem really smart. Like, oh, I've got all these other people that I know I can like put into this battle, right? So. For everything that Kyle said and 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 then adding that on, I, I say D. Like he's very whiny and like kind of a baby all throughout Rogue One. And so this card gives him way too much credit and uh kind of gives him a little bit more like he's kind of a little bit scarier, right? And I, I never mm. felt that in Rogue One. You're just like, yeah, this guy's a twerp. Like Grand Moff Tarkin and Vader are like. The, were really the scary ones in that whole that whole movie so yeah I, I have to agree that the the cunning and racist ambition are the parts that don't really line up with how he was in the movie uh and then, you know you mentioned like the idea of him being scary it's, uh, I, I referenced this in the rebel article but if, if you go back and watch the the original teaser for rogue one it's that he looks awesome. Uh, like there's just like a, a shot of him just kind of like brooding all alone in the Death Star. There's a shot of him like walking out into the battlefield, like into the middle of a lake uh, and his cape is flowing behind him and there's fire everywhere. I think that the rewrites, uh, which are kind of famous uh, for what happened to Rogue One might have done him in a little bit in that department. But I will say I, I give him a B despite all that because he, in Legion, he is the wimpiest commander on defense in the game who's not, uh, you know, a generic officer. Uh, is that he has white saves with no low profile, no take cover, uh, you know, no, no way with command cards to get dodges. Uh, so he is like literally the easiest unique commander to kill. Uh, his gun is, was not very good in the, in the movie. Uh, he hit Cassian once and he sort of like was like, ouch, and then he, Climbed all the way up a, a radio tower after getting shot. It uh, doesn't seem like much of a gun to me. Uh, and uh, and I like, even though I agree it should be more than two suppression tokens, is that the fact that it gives him suppression tokens on top of everybody else, uh, it's this, because it's what, it's what ended up being uh, his doom at the end of the day. So I like that little bit of flavor. I think Cassian probably had just played Last Stand. You know, so a bunch of dodge <laughs> yeah. tokens. Yeah, that does make sense. Uh, all right, Palpatine. Mm. Yeah, um, I I'm going S. I I don't even think I need to explain why. What? I, think, I don't think you really do either. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We, all know, we yeah. all know what you're talking about. Yeah, yeah. yeah I'm with you. Yeah. Uh, it's, is this unanimous S? It it almost is. Uh -oh. There's one there's one detractor. Uh, okay. So his, Go ahead. his command card is awesome. His lightning, I think, is the is the perfect amount of dice and keywords. Uh, everything's great until you get to pull the strings. And the main reason why I have a little bit of an argument against it is that I cannot imagine in the fiction Palpatine like hanging out in the back next to Bosk and him like whispering to Bosk like hey shoot shoot that airspeeder over there again <laughs> it just it seems a little bit it seems a little bit weird uh for I mean it, it seems weird at all for him to be like on the battlefield commanding troops in the first place but yeah it's not like I'm mad that he's in the game and I think that like I mentioned everything else captures him but just the idea of him even deigning to talk to anyone who isn't Darth Vader or maybe his guards uh, it just kind of seems out of character. So that, that's really all that, that detracts him, in my opinion. I think that's fair. <laughs> seems like the concept of pulling the strings is kind of hard to um, represent on a battlefield. Yeah. Just because he's always, he's the puppet master. 
right? Which right. is not really a concept that translates well to actual like in-game combat. Um, now, if I mean, you like could he, like mess with it, the turn zero setup, or you know your opponent's yeah. order stack, or something like that, um, you know. Yeah, like his pulling the strings is to get like a politician assassinated before the election uh, because right. he wants he wants the wimpy politician who's going to be more afraid of him in there instead. Uh, but it's not exactly a legion thing. So I mean, they they tried. It, they almost got there. It's too yeah. bad. <laughs> That's fair. All right, general viewers. <laughs> so, uh, as a lot of people know, Veers has been one of my favorite commanders for a long time. Uh, but if we we'll, uh, F, I think overall, uh, and so here, here's here's why, and and I'm just making this up on the spot. I have done no pre <laughs> prep for this podcast at all. Um, it says master tactician right on mm. his card um and nothing about him uh, makes me feel like that is what's happening at totally all agree ever um you know I, I i like i like some of the stuff he does with the vehicles with his command cards giving him a dodge and letting them you know uh dodge crits uh the recover is nice but like i don't know and he does an airstrike so i i mean i don't see any master tactician in there i just see a bunch of random things um he doesn't have cunning which you think a master tactician would have mm -hmm. um you know he he doesn't have anything um that makes him smarter he just <laughs> or better uh in the battlefield maybe spotter too but yeah i think overall an f uh canon wise so let me ask this because i don't know probably as much about beers as you do what's the basis for that subtitle besides like, is there any is there any canon veers that's present besides just what he does in Empire Strikes Back? If I remember correctly, and please, Evan, if you know or if somebody wants to write in, if I remember correctly, a number of the battles, including Hoth, he was credited for winning and like finding them and rooting out the rebels. And so that I think that's why he gets the master tactician thing that he was kind of like. You know, I we see the Luke and you know the Emperor and Vader, but really Veers was leading some of these charges that were taking out the rebels and really putting down the the rebellion and, and everything else. Yeah, I think he's he's referenced a little bit in, in some books, and, and that's really mainly what I gathered from Wikipedia. Uh, I, I think I just have this feeling that he got master tactician because he was uh he, he was the first like non force using Imperial commander to come out in the game. Right. Uh, and so I feel like, you know, it was early in the game's life cycle. And, you know, I, I think that deep down FFG wanted to convince you of like, why should you take this dude who spent his entire canon history inside of the head of an ATAT -AT, uh, over, you know, a Lord of the Sith. Um, and then I think that they ended up realizing later that there were other dudes in the empire who were more along, who actually like showed elements of being a tactician. Uh, and Kyle, did you get to give him a grade yet? Uh, I did I not. I interrupted um, you. Go ahead. And I, I actually, I was going to give him a B because, um, you know, he doesn't, if you just take what you see on Hoth, like nothing about that assault is terribly um clever or fanciful he just <laughs> like you know he has an overwhelming force um he lands near his target and then he does a full frontal assault on it <laughs> like, <laughs> with, with the vehicle that, that is invincible escape. basically what's that with the vehicle that is basically invincible except <laughs> for you know getting tripped up by a uh, speeder right and then like most of the rebels still escape so including all of their primary targets uh -huh. <laughs> so all they actually succeed in doing is destroying the base which is still useful i guess but you know uh, you're, i can't you're imagine still that give him a like, b? what's that you're still gonna give him a b after well, all that the reason i'm giving him a b is because okay. the actual profile on his card um is very much just like random schmo imperial commander mm, uh -huh. um 
which I think is fine for somebody that, you know, basically did what he did in, in Empire Strikes Back. Um, the, the, the master tactician subtitle has always felt a little bit out of place with him for me um, because he's just kind of like, you know, dude that doesn't mess up too badly like the other Imperial officers in the films. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, exactly. So, you know, like he's, he's average Joe Imperial commander, which I think is fine. Yeah, I think I think you nailed the fact that a Legion card that is close to as uninspiring as the character was gets a high grade in, in this metric. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So, uh, so I I gave him I gave him a B as well. Uh, I think that you know the the pluses for him in this scale are that uh, you know he's just kind of generally uninspiring as is the Legion unit, uh, and also uh, it, it, to to the point where I actually you know I, I did. I do a little bit of research for this, you know, to, to earn my keep around here. And uh, when looking at Wikipedia, fully a third of his references are to the Star Wars helmet collection. It's <laughs> <laughs> not something that I was aware existed until uh, I was looking at his article. And so if like a third of your of your canon reference material is a, is a helmet collection, then uh, it, it has to mean that you're kind of unimpressive, which again goes with the card. I think that really the the thing that takes away from his uh, his accuracy, so to speak, is that uh, can you guys correct me if I'm wrong? His one pip is supposed to be an ATAT -AT shot, right? Yeah, I mean the the art is him like pulling down the yeah you know, yeah the, the targeting thing for his his ATAT, -AT. um, and he he appears to be like in an ATAT, -AT. and you know the quote is from the scene where he blows something up with an ATAT, -AT. so yeah. yes. I, well, that's my assumption. It's kind of a, so, I mean, it's. So it's that, that hurts about as much as K2SO punching you. Right. Is, is basically what I'm getting at. Uh, that's not great. So that, that, that pulls him away from being a perfect uninspiring S uh, back into being a B in my opinion. I'm still going F, 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 F. <laughs> You're just mad at him. Yeah. I mean, uh, gosh, I think what, there was I, I thought too like he was supposed to be like the reason he wears that body armor too was because he was supposed to like fight like in the front lines like he would if I remember this and maybe this is extended universe right and doesn't apply to canon but like he he would fight in the front lines too and like what it was like a, like kind of a badass and so you don't really get that too much in this card and and so I don't know. If we're just basing it off that one movie, fine, he's a B. But if we're really basing it off like all the other stories and, you know, I don't know, F. <laughs> Fair enough. Yeah, all right. All right, I did. <laughs> I don't know. I didn't <laughs> really. Uh, I avoided this game for, I still haven't played it uh because of all the loot crate system and everything and i just boycotted it and never gave him my money um and so i don't know <laughs> see that's it's there that's based, a default answer i guess yeah based on what i know see you guys are gonna know more than i will yeah it's a little hard to like rank someone based on a video game because Kind of based on how good you are at first person shooters your mileage may vary mm. <laughs> like you know if you're like a twitchy pro at first person shooters she's going to be the most ultimate badass that you know has ever mowed down rebel troopers um or just sort of okay uh yeah. <laughs> I, i'm gonna give her i'm gonna give her a b just because i don't know like what to do with that her her abilities and cards um do a pretty good job of mirroring like what she's capable of in the game mm -hmm. um you know between quick th quick thinking uh you know covert ops she's always like infiltrating behind enemy lines um the concept of loadout you know is very like first person shooter-esque yeah um as is marksman uh you know i love the presence of of id 10 mm -hmm. and the fact that he can like zap people because that's a, th a big thing that you do with him in battlefront too um her command cards are pretty on point in that respect so yeah i'm gonna get i'm gonna give her a b um mostly just because I'm, I'm not quite sure what to do with someone whose canon 
is in a video game. Um, and she also defects to the rebellion. Like, yeah. Do you do you uh, do you know offhand? Uh, I I only do because I thought about this the other day. Is like so it's a it's a game of I think fifteen missions and how many missions you're actually as an imperial uh, while playing through the game. Uh, it's it's two. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say it's super early. At least in Battlefront yeah. two, she's also in Battlefront one, right? No, she was she was uh, invented. One didn't have a campaign; it was yep. just multiplayer. Oh. Uh, yep. okay. So she was invented for two. Oh, so she is literally just in Battlefront too. Yeah, and there was there was a book that I didn't read, and I heard it was okay. Uh, but okay. Yeah, yeah, is like I, I the have, book canon. Yeah, because yes, the book, the yeah. book, she, if I remember, I didn't read it, but I remember like reading something about it. But she goes on to fight in the Battle of Jakku for the rebels, and her and I think Gideon get married, and or Dell, her and Dell get Del. ma- her and Dell get married, and then. I don't know. There's all this stuff, but yeah, it's, it's long and drawn out. <laughs> you, you might, I mean, you might like the book because the book is the stuff you mentioned, I think is in the, it was like a free DLC for the Battlefront 2 campaign was like the, the sequel era stuff. Um, okay. But then the book is about before the video game. So she's like all in on empire stuff, killing some rebels. So mm. I don't know. You might enjoy that. Okay. I do uh, enjoy that. <laughs> yeah there you go i mean but like i i think i think kyle pretty much nailed it is that the i think all of her command cards are basically like different you know shoulder button abilities that she has in the video game so lines up pretty well yeah. uh the one thing that i think is kind of messed up is that ie 10's range is only one uh when in the game it's like a thing where you can just kind of look at a trooper and press triangle or whatever and he will fly like across the entire screen at like yeah. a dude who is like 10 meters away or whatever and then just like go zap him and he's you know just kind of doing the electrified zappy thing and you can just go up and punch him in the face to finish him off so i feel like id10 is a little bit underpowered in the game if anything uh but yeah i i think that i think that she gets a b because she's well represented by the stuff that she has but in reality uh she would have made more sense as a rebel commander as much as you hate to hear that, Jay. No, I mean, it's fine. I get it, right? Like, in my <laughs> experience, she wasn't in Empire that long. So, I, <laughs> you know, and that's, I think, uh, just a little sidetrack. I think that was a real miss I in, too. Some, in some of these was, is not only, you there could have been an opportunity to put in a Rebels and an Empire card for like a couple of these, like her and 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 Callus. Right. And had them have dual roles and, and you could have changed the profile. Right. So if it doesn't make sense uh, balance wise to have Iden be as strong, you know, as strong as she is or have different powers for rebels, you could do that on a different card, you know. And so I think that was a real missed opportunity to have cross faction with with a number of the characters. They got plenty of time. If they run out of ideas, they'll just put her in a leather jacket and re-release her as a rebel commander. Yeah, but they'll yeah. only release it to like the stores, and you have to like go to a <laughs> tournament to, to get it. She'll, yeah. she'll she'll be a unit card in a different expansion for like Republic or something right. like that. That won't even have her in it, and so you'll have to buy three models kits just to get her yeah. and the card and her gun that she has for rebels. It'll be like getting Republic Chewy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, you gotta buy the Yoda that. expansion and the Rebel oh. Chewie expansion. <laughs> Guys, we haven't even made it to the commanders. I know we gotta plow through some of these. We gotta do some some, some yeah. quicker hits. Um Imperial Officer. I agree. <laughs> but I think that is on point, right? Like yeah. I'd say an A for for I know. guess the closest I have to that is the solo movie right and seeing some of the stuff that was going on mim bam and i guess yeah a i give her an a i think that uh exactly is that she as a unit uh it's kind of not very exciting especially when they're shooting i feel like they might have shot a couple of times in the movies but it never really worked out much like the rebel officer uh yeah and um the inspiring thing i don't think i've seen any any uh like you know low down imperial officers be very inspiring in any of the canons so that takes away i, I give them a b like, whatever yeah, yeah. <laughs> all right uh operatives <clears throat> boba fett okay okay all right i gotta go back to the rules here um 
if we're only basing it off of does the cartoon count, Evan? Are we are we counting the 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 cartoon? Wasn't he version? only in the wasn't he only in Clone Wars? Was he even in Rebels at all? I meant the original cartoon that was in the oh, Christmas oh, special. Oh yeah, well that that definitely counts. <laughs> all right. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, uh, you know, I mean, listen, I, he's not great in the game. If we really look, he wasn't that great in the movies. Yep. Uh, and so, <laughs> so hey. <laughs> you, I think you nailed it. What do you think, Kyle? Uh, I, would, I would argue um, that the fact that he's not great in the game has more to do with his points than his unit card. Um, yeah, probably true. His unit card is actually representative of someone that's like very good at killing people. Um, you know, he's got Sharpshooter 2, he's got Surge Crit, um, mm. he's got Arsenal 2 with multiple weapons on his profile. All of his command cards are weapons um, in some fashion, and he's really fast. So um, I'm actually going to give him like a C because if, if we're, you know, if this is not an effectiveness tier ranking, um, his abilities and cards certainly. Uh, seem to indicate that this is somebody that's very good at their job um and i guess he did catch han solo which is pretty impressive but besides that one feat you know the most significant thing he does in the movies is get hit in the back by a blind han solo well, and then fly into a star well, like that. Well, well hold on did he catch han solo he, he followed him to Cloud City. He was the one who told vader where he was so right. i, I give so him credit for tracking at least he needed the assist yeah, he did. <laughs> from yeah. Vader yeah. to even catch him. <laughs> yeah, I, Boba Fett movie generation not as great as we all made him out to be uh, mm -hmm. overall. We all tricked ourselves. Well, yeah, and that's that's why I'm giving him like a C because his unit card is kind of that of a badass, and in the movie he's. I yeah, I understand really what you're not. saying, but I don't feel like that ever plays out that way in the game. Like that's well, that's what his unit card feels like, but when you actually play him, he never turned out. I, I agree. My my picture of him in the game is based on my experiences usually playing against him in the game, which is that uh, he he has he his bark is worse than his bite, and I think that lines up with the with the canon version pretty well. Uh, so I, I think the I think you guys both have good points. I think I'm, I'm landing at a B to kind of split the difference. I, I will just say one funny thing is that uh, basically all of his command cards are from the same five minutes of Return of the Jedi. Uh, <laughs> I'm like imagining Alex and Luke like reviewing the Boba Fett footage that they can use. I'm like, okay, well, there's this one scene of the sail barge where he does some things. So let's just make that his command card. Yep. <laughs> too exactly. Bad. Not a lot to work with there. Yeah, exactly. All right, Bosk. Hmm. I mean, I guess you got to go deep on, on Clone Wars TV show for this because yeah. Hidden Empire Strikes Back, all he does is stand menacingly on a Star Destroyer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, um, I, I guess he, I, see, I, I don't know. I, I He does some cool stuff in, the, you know, from the Clone Wars episodes that I saw. Uh, I think they made up some stuff, you know, for the game to kind of make him more fleshed out. And so, yeah, I, I would say a C. So because, uh, you know, because I use the scientific method, I, I watched the, the Bosk supercut uh, of, of his Clone Wars stuff. Uh, by watch, I mean, I like skip past the first five minutes where it's clear he was just talking and being kind of creepy and menacing. And then the last two minutes is him fighting. Uh, so when he's fighting, um, two things I noticed is that he's pretty good at scratching people up when they're up close to him. Uh, he gets enraged at one point and starts going crazy. Uh, and then he also tries to shoot his gun at somebody who's like range one away from him and misses every single shot. Uh, so I give him an S because that lines up perfectly with the footage that I was able to review. Yeah, that seems good. Based on, it's been a long time since I've watched Clone Wars, but that sounds about right as far as I remember him. So. Well, like when you think of that footage is that he's, you know, he's mostly just kind of like creepy and staring at you and being menacing, which lines up pretty well with what he does in the game until yeah. it comes time to use five, you know, what, 10 aims and, uh, and <laughs> totally obliterate your airspeeder. Yep, exactly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, Darth Vader operative. Oh. <sighs> 
Yeah, I mean, I think to go back to what we were talking about, right? This is the scary Vader. Mm -hmm. I think that Commander Vader should have been. Um, uh, you know, the Emperor's Apprentice is on the title. So it's, you know, uh, supposed to be indicative of his younger years or like right after um, he became. Yeah, like the comic version. Yeah. yeah or the, yeah, or the Star Wars yeah. Rebels version. So I would say it it lines up really, really well. I, I would say at least an, an A, if not an S tier on this one. Especially where he is today with the changes, the speed two move they change they made, you know, uh, the car changes. Uh, yeah, I, I would put him, I would definitely put him at a, a A or an S. Let's say high A. I'm going to go high A. Uh, I'm going to go with, I'm going to go with an A simply because um, I don't really see the justification for making him natively faster than like you know, the slightly older version of himself, given that he's got the same legs and I don't think cybernetics are um, <laughs> prone to aging. <laughs> uh, but other than that, yeah, I mean, he's terrifying. So see how I read it as is like, they're the same speed, but older Vader like knows he doesn't have to because he's so Nailed strong it. that he's just Absolutely. like, and, you know, I, the, I guess. Yeah, this Vader's like still learning his powers, so he's kind of like got to move a little bit faster to catch up with stuff. But yeah, I, I think you nailed it. I think he's just more confident when he's older, and he just he and he's also more confident about uh, you know, just knowing that his his troops better put a motor on if they want to have a chance at not being dead by the end of the day. Yeah. Uh, and uh, yeah, and. I think really the the only thing I can add is that uh, this this was saved from being a lower grade by the recent RG because I've always thought that the idea of Vader like looking at his watch and going oh look at the time I better hurry up uh, was always <laughs> was always kind of dumb so just making him natively faster was a much better choice I, I agree with an A. So it's not the Commander Vader can't move speed too. He just chooses he not doesn't to. need to. He doesn't yeah. have to. He's so badass with the force, he he could care less. <laughs> yeah. You ever seen a guy, you know, wearing aviators moving away from an explosion who's like walking <laughs> oh, yeah. fast? No, you walk slow. Yeah. Well, and it's it's kind of like the um, you know, the villains in horror movies, right? When they're chasing somebody mm -hmm. and whoever that is is like running as fast as they <laughs> yeah, can. Exactly. Yeah. And then and then, you know, Freddy Krueger, whoever is just sort of like you know, taking these like purposeful strides and is somehow mm -hmm. catching up to the person that's like sprinting away. Yeah. Well, you know how I see it, Kyle? It's like us as parents. When I was a younger parent, I would have chased my son and like tried to go <laughs> after him to make him stop whatever he was doing. But now as an older parent, I just go, no, you got to come back here sometime. So uh, well, I'll get you when you come back. And, and frankly, toddlers <laughs> don't run very fast. So it's actually kind of like you can sort of replicate that. Like I'm the Terminator and I'm yeah. walking to catch up with you yeah. feeling. Um, because when a three-year-old runs away from you, you know, they're like, they're booking it, but their yeah. legs are like, yeah, yeah. you know, a foot tall. And <laughs> so you can kind of just take like purposeful strides and actually catch them yeah. while they're yeah. sprinting. Um, it's a nice like movie theme feel. Uh, <laughs> but yeah. <laughs> anyway all right um let's do core all right so spoiler alert on core all of mine are going to be the same oh i could tell you that right now okay okay well let's start with shores yeah s here's why and 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 you're going to hear me say this a lot right so we these Let's include the, the mortar as part of this conversation. Yeah, agreed, right? agreed, 100%. Yeah, okay. You have to. That's what makes it an S, right? And yeah. I think for me, um, I, I rank them as an S because they're a little bit more, you know, uh, cool, a little bit more um, stronger, right? Than normal stormtroopers that we saw before. When we first saw them in Rogue One, they're on the beach just like annihilating things, right? They're hitting their targets. They're shooting things. They've got the mortars. They're launching stuff. I mean, um, and then how, and then same as what we've seen them in uh, Mandalorian, right? We've seen them a few times in Mandalorian as well. And they're, and they're a very good trooper, which mimics this exactly, you know? And so I, I find them to be an S tier, yeah. They, they're very, very close to their to their uh, canon. Do you actually remember seeing any mortars in Rogue One? Oh, good I'm question, scared. Kyle. 
That is a good question. I know the answer to this question. That's why I, I, I also know the answer to this question. Yeah, yeah I think it's I think it's in the if I remember correctly, it's in the advertisements and some of the first trailers, but it never made the cut into the movie. Uh, it is it is not in the movie. Um, and this is, in fact, something that uh, FFG invented out of whole cloth. Mm -hmm. Oh, really? Um, they actually even got to name it, I think. Uh, so, yeah, I'm going to give them a C. Um, I agree on the shores themselves, um, but given that the mortar is, um, which is really cool, by the way, that FFG got to do that. I'm not saying they shouldn't be doing these things. I think that's great. But if, if we're ranking them based purely on like what's present in canon, you have a you have a unit in the in the DF90 mortar trooper that like literally doesn't exist in Star Wars canon. So, wow. well, um, you got me, Kyle. You did it. <laughs> yeah, I agree. I agree. It's cool when FFG gets to invent stuff. They invented the Imperial Raider, and then that ended up becoming canon in Battlefront Two, which is pretty rad. Um, but yep. uh, but yeah, like I have nothing to add to the short troopers. They basically seem like they're more competent than regular stormtroopers for some reason. Uh, I guess like you know, beach duty is the most sought after, so they get the best. Uh, they get the best soldiers. Uh, there you go. And, Everyone wants and to yeah, go to the beach. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, and the mortar doesn't really exist in canon. It's funny when I looked it up on Wikipedia, and they had one reference, which was to the Star Wars Legion Short Troopers Unit expansion, and I was like, oh, and that's how I found out about it. I think uh, I think you probably knew a different way, Kyle. But uh, yeah, so it averages out to a C uh, because the shores get an A or an S and uh, the, uh, the mortars get a zero. Does it strike you as strange that um, they actually have a specific different type of troop for like beach defense? I mean, it doesn't surprise me because like I did read the legends books back in the day when they had the really dumb stuff like, you know, flame troopers and rock troopers and lava troopers for, mm -hmm. you know, when you need something a little bit between the flame trooper and a rock trooper, that's when you bust out a lava trooper and they had different like zero G troopers. It was ridiculous. It, it was, it was basically like an episode of GI Joe. So I think they were just kind of taking a little bit of that, uh, of yeah. that inspiration into the new movie. You know how I always, I've always kind of looked at it as like the military branches, right? Like, so you have, army navy air force uh you know and marines and so like they all do different things and so you know i i could see that being like hey we we got a bunch of planets that have x y and z we need people that are capable of dealing with that yeah i mean i get i get the concept of like environments that actually require um different tactics and different equipment i'm just not sure that like a beach defending a beach is really that much different than the environment that like a normal it is. Storm, storm trooper would be operating <laughs> maybe maybe it is it's scary who knows i think I it was know. a cost saving measure because they don't have armor on their legs and that way they can just kind of squat in the water uh and uh, <laughs> it helps with the budget um when you're trying to do that for the imperial senate but that, there you that go seems like the most imperial reason to, yeah. to say hey we're going to take away the leg armor and call you a short trooper <laughs> There you go. Yeah. They certainly look cooler. Yeah. Um, all right. Snow troopers. S. Here's why. They look exactly like they should. They've got a flame trooper and they uh, have steady, which is amazing, which kind of lines up with, with, with what they were doing on Hoth and killing them rebel troopers. I like it. Yeah, I'm with you. I'm not going to overthink this one. I agree. I, I I think that it makes sense that they would go slower because they, you know, have some extra layers in there. Um, and uh, when you're going slower, it's easier to aim. So it's basically as simple as that. I don't remember any uh, flamethrowers or ion cannons in the movies, but I'm not going to let that take away. Let's just give it an S. Well, and there are cannon sources for that other than just... Um... Yeah, you yeah. Know, there, like video there's games some and other stuff, stuff maybe, out there. But um, other other than just, you know, FOG making something up. Yeah. Uh, all right, Stormtroopers. Uh, S. <laughs> it's still a funny joke. Yeah. I mean, you know, like when, 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 somebody, when somebody either rolls all misses or mostly hits and then uses precise to roll into fully hits, 
you can use the same joke for either one at the tabletop and yep. it's it still hasn't gotten old yeah so it's perfect i agree it is absolutely perfect <laughs> the the only um you know we're not we're not doing points as part of this i was going to say the only the only thing i would say is i feel like they should be more numerous for what you're paying for them uh based on the like the fact that they're the literal original red shirt in star wars mm-hmm. yeah. um but uh yeah that's my only my only gripe i think Minimal as time gripe. goes on they're just going to keep getting cheaper so yeah you're probably right that's where the heavy yeah uh all right special forces this is going to be a long list so we should probably try and plot through these a little bit uh Death i think troopers. we should group together the scouts so that way that's fair yep. yeah all right dust troopers b b I felt like they were way more and maybe maybe when they originally came out for legion they were more menacing um but yeah i you know i i think they're getting back there with some of the changes and i think they're coming back to the game but i mean they were real menacing in you know when we saw them and and so um yeah i I don't think they're as menacing as they were in the movies but they're still close so i would say a b and their work with krennic it all makes sense it ties in that's why Mm -hmm. it's not a c or a d um but yeah i would strong b i'm gonna say a they were actually like when they came out uh they were kind of like the you know is this ranged power creep unit because they could kind of reliably push like six hits at range four Mm -hmm. um and that was something that was novel <laughs> when that happened. Um, they were a terrifying range unit when they first came out. And now they're, they're getting back to the point where, uh, you know, a combination of cost reductions and other stuff is kind of putting that back into that conversation. Um, but uh, yeah, I'm going to give them an A. Yeah, I agree with you guys. I give them an A. Uh, they have, you know, th- in the movie, they strike you as, uh, a unit that could be like fully kitted out in a bunch of different ways. And I think when you have all the upgrades on them, they have well, like five different ways that they could attach, attack you uh, with, you know, their armament and the heavy, and then they have three weapons on their unit cards. So pretty cool. I think it, it would be an S except for the fact that they have a comms upgrade and no one can understand what the hell they're saying. So that doesn't really make a lot of sense to me. That's true. Especially the most common, um, upgrade for that slot is comms relay which <laughs> yeah. seems kind of strange for them yeah it's like they're they're relaying to gideon hats saying, <laughs> <He's> like, <laughs> wait what'd you say <laughs> i'm sorry can you repeat that <laughs> yeah uh all right speaking of gideon imperial special forces i think we should just talk about inferno squad here because i'm i'm not aware of regular generic isf even being a thing that's fair yeah okay in front yeah. squad. Uh, 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 <laughs> again, I didn't really play the video game, and so I only know what I've read about it. And uh, I don't see because don't they like split up and like some of them become good, and so like it doesn't make any sense. So, so yeah, Hask, Hask gets mega bad, uh, like first order level bad, uh, where he's like, you know bordering on on getting like really creepy on how bad he gets uh, and then Dell becomes a big softy. Yeah, so yep. see. <laughs> Sticking with it. Yeah, I'll say B. Um, I mean, they're super customizable. They have retinue with Aiden, which makes perfect sense. Yep. Um, they have marksman, which also makes perfect sense and infiltrate. So yeah, I'm going to say B um, just because all that stuff makes sense. But for the same reason, you know, Aiden, like Dell is a rebel for 13 of the 15 <laughs> yeah. missions in Battlefront too. So Yeah, that's where I am too. I think the amount of time that Dell spent as a rebel uh, takes something away and Aiden uh, for that matter. But um, really the only other thing is that Hask is just such a nasty dude. I feel like he, and, and it's not like it would have been a big deal because it's kind of a bad keyword, but they could have given him demoralized one. And I think it would have been just fine. Yeah, that's true. Him just merely increasing the courage of a unit that he's in seems a little tame for yeah, what he is. Yeah. Uh, all right, Imperial World Guard. A. Solid A. I would say they, you know, I think I what 
<clears throat> the reason I r- rate them a little bit lower is okay. So the A is for you know the entourage with Pelp, the the way they look, the guardian um, discipline too. Like that all makes sense. That's all great, right? Um, the I think I I don't go S just because I don't really you know you'd have to go pretty far to see them fight and do any like real crazy stuff and so the blaster seems weird and you know um i get that they're supposed to be good fighters and we all assume that they were because they were guardian palpatine so why wouldn't they be but like at the same time you don't really um you have to go pretty deep to see anything like that so yeah uh, in a i'm gonna say c for two reasons uh, the first is that um, now that we have a more specific guardian keyword, it kind of makes me wonder if, you know, they would benefit from a specific just like Bingo. guardian Palpatine. Yeah. Um, because I really can't see like a Royal Guard diving in front of a laser shot for a stormtrooper. <laughs> right. Yeah. Uh-huh. So that's the primary reason. Uh, the second, uh, and this is kind of a complaint with all units that have pistols in Star Wars. Um I don't really get why Star Wars pistols have like more dice and more volume of fire than things that aren't pistols, you know, in modern combat, um, unless you have like a machine pistol or a submachine gun or something like that, you're not going to really get more volume of fire or more accuracy than like an assault rifle. Um, you know, pistols are just like objectively inferior in terms of range and damage output to things that have barrels on them. Yep. <laughs> um, so why a pistol gets two black dice when like an E11 gets one white dice. Um, yeah. I guess you could say maybe it's in the hands of like an elite soldier. So but if, that, if a, that were the case, right. If you look at, in, uh, if you look at death troopers, they have an E11, what is it? D and it's yeah. a one to three, one black dice. And it's like, yeah. well, they're more elite, aren't they? Like right. death is in their like, name. <laughs> Like the fleet pistols have two dice, you know, the scout trooper pistols have two dice. It seems to be a thing that like pistols have more dice. And I, I just, I really don't understand why they should just be worse. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's purely game balance, but you can make yeah. short range characters more impressive. Uh, I mean, that's all there is to it. And I, and I agree. It takes something away. Uh, also in battlefront one, when you, when somebody spawned as the emperor, like I think two players got to spawn for free as Royal guards. They had a rocket launcher in Battlefront <laughs> One. Really? Yeah, just like the Magna Guards do now. And so, and and you know, I wonder if, you know, if they redid that card now, if they wouldn't think about giving them more than one, uh, you know, because right now the heavy basically just enables them to be really annoying at close range. But um, they they could have been they could have been more like the Magna. And and I actually for for this one, I maybe went a little bit extreme. I went all the way to an F because mainly because of one experience I had uh, uh, playing a game where Rex did a very nice uh, air support shot, got a lot of hits, and uh, they, they like dove in front of two Imperial snipers in order to take the hits for them and basically save the units. And I just remember thinking at the time is like, how stupid is this? That like the Emperor's guards are going to be bothering themselves protecting these peons when yeah. they're due right there. Yep. Uh, so I just think they need to fix that keyword and then they could flip things around. Yeah. Unfortunately, make them a lot less good in the game if they did yeah. that. But yeah, True. thematically, it seems like it should just be sort of like Guardian 6 Palpatine, you know? Yeah. Um, they, they should be able to wipe themselves out with one hit if they wanted to. Right. For their dude. Yep. Um, all right, Scout Troopers. I, I have mixed feeling. Are we including both sets, or are we splitting out the? Yeah, I, I think I think we I think we include both sets, especially because I don't think we ever, at least in any of the, the visual stuff, saw them with the sniper rifle. I might be off on that. There might have been one in Rebels, but I think we just kind of take them as a whole. Like, how effective are they compared to the game? Yeah, I mean, um, overall you don't see them a ton um i do remember reading something somewhere that i think they were on like vader's they were part of vader's personal death squads or something that he had on his ship but i don't remember ever hearing what they did (laughs) like i just you know that was that was it i i might be able to shortcut this which is to say that 
including their their pretty funny appearance in the last episode of the season one of Mandalorian, where they're just kind of being doofs, uh, is that usually they show up on screen to be fairly incompetent. Um, and I actually think that this is an area where the unit card, even though it's not great uh, for either one of them, honestly, is that the unit card looks better than they ever have in the canon. And so I would I would give them a B. Yeah, I would I would even say a C. Um, you know, you're, I think you're a very generous ranker, Evan. <laughs> a B. With, with, with a, well, it's it's because I don't think that the units are very good in the game, and I but I think that the the canon is even less impressive. Yeah, but they're, they're getting close. Yeah, I mean they're really not that different from stormtroopers in terms of being like redshirt henchmen in the right. canon, yeah. um, and they're supposed to be kind of you know, the equivalent of, like, army rangers, I guess. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I, I think there'll be a little bit more to say when we get to speeder bikes here in a second about, okay. about how, how well they are at their jobs in the can. <laughs> well, let's do speeder bikes. Well, hang on. Let's do support, because speeder bikes are the last support yeah. listed here. Um, which, by the way, uh, I have a slight gripe with, because usually things that start with numbers are listed before A when you list things alphabetically. <laughs> So, Nick, Nick, one gripe. Yeah. Um, anyway, uh, do back. C D C low C. I'm giving it a low C. I, I, they're great. Don't get me wrong. I love them in the game, but they make great in the game. Yeah, they make what no, they do in the movie? no sense to the movie. They walked around slowly in the desert. <laughs> yeah. Yep. I mean, for that part, that's true. They do walk slow, so let's. I give them. That's why they get to see. Um, but they're not actually point. slow. Is yeah. the thing. They're like right. extremely uh, fast. Yeah. yeah in yeah. the game. Yeah. Um, I guess the speed one is kind of, um, you know, uh, it makes it seem like they're slow. But yeah, no, it's, it's low C, low C for me. I'm gonna say F. Um, because yeah, they. I don't know. They in in Star Wars Legion, they like run around the battlefield super fast and go nom 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 on things. And <laughs> um, I mean, there's certainly their their screen time is fairly limited in canon, but um, it's hard for me to even picture something that is essentially like an oversized mule, uh, as far as I exactly. can tell. Yeah, uh, doing something like that. Um, like when you see them in in you know on Tatooine, you're you're like, why are these guys even riding one of these? Like, how is this superior to a speeder bike or literally any other sort of modern technology? Um, Especially when you're searching, is like, how much ground are you covering compared to yeah, like you said, a speeder bike when you're looking for droids? Is that you're you're walking right. on like five miles an hour? Uh, it just doesn't seem very efficient. So yeah, I. I agree with S because the Legion unit card is like really good. And when you see it across the field, you're like, you know, calculating time until death uh, in terms of like how far exactly away am I? Uh, do I have, do I have two turns before they're going to be, you know, eating my face or maybe even just one turn if there's new ways going on. Uh, and then in the, uh, in the movies, they uh, are slowly crawling around the desert. Uh, yep. <laughs> and that's really all I can say, I, I guess. There is the accurate part that I think the guy in New Hope has is has a T twenty one on him, so that's technically true, but that's not enough to bring him out of F status for me. Yeah, and also like in what world is I mean so so Star Wars is kind of modeled after World War Two combat, both mm-hmm. in space and the, the ground combat, um, and like in what world would a World War Two style combat uh, would it be effective to mount on some kind of creature and take a lance and charge at your enemy? <laughs> like, yeah, you know, not even, great. Yeah, not great. Uh, so, anyway, yeah, F. All right, Eweb. Uh, B. I'm going B. And I think, um, you know, it was nice. They, they, they were in Empire. Um, I don't remember how much damage they did in that but 
Um, I liked the call out in Mandalorian, which made it even better and kind of up the ante of the E-Web and made those surge to crits seem a little bit more relevant uh, in canon. So I would say a B for the E-Webs. Uh, I'm going to say an F um, for two reasons. <laughs> <laughs> Largely based on the Mandalorian appearance, where it appears to be essentially like a heavy machine gun, right? Like an MG42, where it has the firepower of multiple, you know, dudes, multiple squads of dudes with like normal rifles. Um, and where, you know, when Moff Gideon is talking it up, it's basically like, yeah, you guys might be a bunch of, you know, heroic uh, plot armor, good guys. Um, but I got an E-Web, so, you know, you're pretty much screwed. Um, like five dice for... <laughs> something yeah. like that i just i can't get behind that and it, then also the range like how you know this thing is supposed to be like a functionally like a tripod mounted machine gun how is it that it has less range than you know a dlt 19 which exactly. is you know a, a, something that a dude is carrying and has no tripod um and is essentially like you know the star wars equivalent of a light machine gun so um i don't know why this thing isn't range four if not like five uh, I have the same problem with the, the MK2, but um, yeah, this thing feels like it should be like range five with like 10 dice. I totally agree. Uh, if it was just Empire, it would be a C because it would actually be way better than the Empire version, which they don't even finish. Like they're fumbling around setting it up. Yeah. Actually, plot, plotting would have been good. They shouldn't have taken it away if they were talking about the Empire version because they don't even get to, I don't think they even get to shoot the Falcon with it uh, before the guys get killed behind it. But yeah, in Mandalorian, uh, you know, Gideon's talking it up and you can see Cara Dune starting to get pretty afraid when he's talking about it. He even mentions like shooting paratroopers out of the sky with E-Webs, <laughs> which really doesn't line up with what the, uh, what the unit card can do. Uh, it also seems like it should be suppressive uh, or at least have fire support. So yep. yeah, I got to give it a big old F as well. Wow, I went in a completely different direction as you guys on that one. <laughs> Well, we I think it might have to do with how much we like the E-Web in the game. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe we like it a little bit more. <laughs> All right. Speeder bikes. Yeah. A, I think they, they do everything that they're supposed to do. They die easy. They move fast. Yeah. They, I mean, it's all, it all makes sense. Yeah. Move fast, die easy. <laughs> That's pretty much my thoughts on it. Yeah, I mean, uh, I, I think the only thing is their gun seems a little strong from what we saw, right? And so mm -hmm. that's why maybe I wouldn't put it at an S tier, but A, A seems reasonable for them. Agree. Yep, uh, I think it would have been an S if it was the you know two RGs ago with the old speeder rule, because then they died really easily, and like you know, <laughs> by by putting it next to like the wrong rock that was height two is then all of a sudden one of your minis is just instantly gone. Uh, and I feel like that is what really captures uh, both Return of the Jedi, where they crash in the trees a lot. And then in Mandalorian, there's that episode on the, that uh, volcanic planet where they like bust out of the base and immediately one of them crashes into a rock. Yeah. And maybe, <laughs> yeah. I think the director knew exactly what he was doing when they, uh, when they filmed that. I would never want to be a speeder bike rider. No, like if, if I'm like if I'm signing up for the Imperial, you know, uh, army, um, I'd be like, hard no, but on that one, no thanks. Yeah. All right, uh, let's talk about the uh, two heavy. I'm sorry, three heavies. Um, <laughs> I'm nice for forgetting it. Yeah, one. it's effectively two, but yeah, go ahead. <laughs> yeah, uh, ATSD. Yeah, A from me. I mean, it's strong. It's been scary. It's still scary to this day. I think as someone who's played an ATST often, whenever I put that on the table, people are scared and they should be. And that's how it's always been in all, you know, I mean, besides some weird jungle bears being able to destroy it. Um, it's, it's one of the toughest and in Mandalorian kind of kept that tradition alive, right? Like mm -hmm. even with like a, you know, they had like an old, one that they put an AI in or something and it was still like just like running through the force killing things and that's yeah that's how they do it A yep agree 
Yeah, they, they spent an entire episode basically planning how to destroy one. And that's kind of what you have to do in the game is that you need to have a plan of what to do with it. Uh, and also it in both the, the, you know, the canon and the game, it, it moves, it moves pretty awkwardly. Uh, and so I think it captures being a really powerful force that is kind of goofy in the way that it moves around the battlefield. So I give it an A. All right, the Lat LE patrol transport. I, I mean, all right, so I have a funny, I guess, uh, answer for this, which is I have no idea what it does in canon or in the game. So I guess it's an S tier. <laughs> Right, so I don't know. You, you could give that non-applicable, or you know, no comments. All right, I'll give want. it that. Yeah, I'll give it that straight face. I have no idea what it does, <laughs> and, it, and it, it serves no purpose in anything I'm aware of. So, um, I'm going to give it a C. Primarily, so it this thing is supposed to be like a Black Hawk helicopter. You know, the Star Wars equivalent of a Black Hawk helicopter, basically. Yeah. Um, the only time I can I can think of in canon of one of these actually firing for any significant duration is in, like, Fallen Order. Uh, mm. It's in Rebels a little bit. It but, is in Rebels, yeah, but Fallen does Order it actually shoot in Rebels, or just, is it just, like, it, flying? It does, around? and it's a very unimpressive, dinky little shot, which I think lines up with the card pretty well. Okay, well, maybe, <laughs> maybe uh, I should give it a higher rating, then, uh, because at least in... <laughs> At least in Fallen Order, it's maybe this is the difficulty level I had the game on, <laughs> but uh, it's fairly scary as far as its damage output is concerned. Um, but you're right. Uh, thinking back to Rebels, it's actually like fairly wimpy when it does do its shooting. Um, so maybe I'll give it a B because it's a fast unit that transports things and doesn't hit very hard. So that that's what I have too. Uh, the laser is the the laser is kind of unimpressive. It transports people that are, you know, just kind of regular dudes. Uh, you know, the the era of Vader and Alad is way over by now, I think. Uh, so if anybody's going to use it, I guess it's to like let some full scouts out there to, or maybe maybe like Ion or Flamer Snows to see if he can have fun. Um, but it, it really mostly be for fun, and they also die pretty easily uh in rebels they get shot by like some ground troops and then they just kind of yep. blow up so that's accurate to be all right gav yeah i mean based off my own my only experience of this uh i'm gonna give it an a i mean listen it seems like it's gonna be strong uh and then it ends up dying much quicker than you anticipated <laughs> so <laughs> I think they nailed it. Yeah, out of all my uses. And it it's ridiculous in an urban environment. These are all things that line up with my personal experience in this stupid game with this stupid tank. So yes, an A. <laughs> yeah, I'm with you. Uh, it dies quickly, um, gets caught and flanked in a tight alley, mm -hmm. um, has trouble moving around. Yeah, these all seem on point. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I, I was initially thinking C because I thought that the game version of it actually seemed better than the one in Rogue One in terms of like it being able to shoot from far away uh, and, you know, maybe put on some damage. But then I remember just like that scene, you know, the one scene that we're all thinking of uh, and just, yeah, I could see it in the game of being trapped in there and realizing that there's literally no amount of reposition that's going to save me. <laughs> <laughs> from from this tank being in exactly the wrong place in order to help with the objective at all. And then when I remembered that, I was like, okay, it's an A. Yeah, it makes perfect sense to that movie. <laughs> yep, and, that I, seems good. and I love it and hate it all at the same time. <laughs> I bet. I will say these are also in Star Wars Rebels oh, as okay. a repulsor tank. Oh, oh. Um, well, that would be better. It would be. Uh, and it's interesting um, it's cl clearly they based the unit, off, the Legion unit, off of the um, Rogue One version. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I think it was actually in Rebels first before it was in Rogue One, and it is definitely a repulsor unit in Rebels. Um, I'm sure someone with more knowledge of these things can correct me if I'm wrong, but my understanding is that they basically couldn't get the effect to work or something like that in Rebels, like the visual, of, or I'm sorry, in Rogue One, the visual effect of a repulsor tag, so they um, just made it tracked. 
that uh, that scene also had an air battle in the original cut, or at least they were trying to make one. Like you see crashed partisan X wings and like the black and white coloring that you might have seen in X, the X wing miniatures game. And yeah. uh, so I think that that was the original version was very different. Uh, but I'm just going to say that the canon explanation is more budget cuts is that they uh, replaced the repulsor with tank treads, and there you go. Yeah, that's my understanding. If someone has better information, <laughs> please let us know. Um, I bet you're right. That's my recollection. So yeah, all right. Woof, we did um, it. This is a long episode. It was that good. was a long episode. Yeah. With the, I hope with you the, had fun though. Yeah, we absolutely did. I'm just thinking for those of you who have made it to the end. <laughs> Thank I, you. I just I got a feeling based off of how long the Keegan interview was in this. I'm I'm thinking we're close to two and a half hours. <laughs> it's probably closer to two, but yeah, it's uh, <laughs> it's up <somewhere>. there. <laughs> yeah. I haven't talked for two weeks. You know, yeah. I got to make up the lost time. Well, Kyle and I, like, before we got on, we we're like, yeah, this is going to be a short one. I did the interview. <laughs> like, lay, this is a layup. Here we are, triple overtime. <laughs> yep. Well, it's because it's because the subject matter is so important that it, yes. it deserves the time that it got. Well, as soon as you started dry, dropping scientific data and <laughs> and your cred- <laughs> and your credentials, I was like, oh shit, we got to take this serious now. Yeah. <laughs> Well, I'm like the research to be like, yeah, I actually, I watched uh, the Bosque montage. That's, that's, that's like watching back the tape after like an NFL game, you know, yeah, I'm just in preparation for this cast. I watched, yeah. I'm like, uh, I'm pretty sure material. I saw a mortar in the video and I was like, no, nope. I'm like, no, I did. I did in a trailer. No, you didn't. Uh, no. um, all right. Well, this was super fun. Yeah. Um, thanks a lot. Yeah. Thanks for, thanks for coming on, Evan. Um, and I will look forward to more of your articles in general in the yep. future, but also more, more ones of this style. So, yeah, then the next one will be about something real. Uh, I promise as real as the, as real as, uh, you know, a certain fluttery, uh, guard vehicle can be anyway. <laughs> All right. Let's see what you did there. Yeah. Um, well, I'm going to go get some sleep because, um, all of my kids have actually been sleeping this entire time that we're recording, which means that I've been missing oh, sleeping what, opportunities. What a waste! So, of, what a utter waste of your time this has been. Then, yeah. oh my god, exactly. <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> yep. Um, oh. Tomorrow I'm gonna be like, I'm tired, and my wife's gonna every, be like, Yeah, yeah. Of every you single are. parent <laughs> who is listening to this right now is like, What is this idiot doing? <laughs> <laughs> This is how you spend your free time, huh? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Do as I do as I say, not as I do. Sleep yeah. when the baby sleeps. Um, all right. First time parents. That's a word of advice. Uh, all right. Well, we are the notorious scoundrels. I'm Kyle. I'm Jay. I'm Evan. The other one. Yeah, the other one. Stay fresh, cheese bags. <laughs>